We good? Dudes, what's up? We're back. Today we have are we are we are we yes. Uh today we have a Buick Encore. We are gonna be doing uh we're gonna be, make it dark. We're gonna do five percent on all the sides in the rear, uh, but we're doing fifty percent on the windshield. So we are finishing getting set up here. We are back for today, and then I got a class to run uh, over the next three days. And then more appointments at the end of the week. Oh my God. There we go. Lucas, Sean, Cash just moved into my new shop. Ooh, congrats. My shop just got more expensive. I bought film from your website. How long does it take to ship? Uh, it ships the same day, unless it was ordered on the weekend. So it'll ship today if you ordered it on the weekend. So I found pre-cut patterns on Lexan. It's carbon tint. Would it be decent to purchase, do a few jobs, get the capital to buy a few rolls of tint? They were fairly cheap. Um, I, if you haven't tinted, I mean, if, you've, if you practice and you can tint, then you can make that happen. The, if you haven't done, if you haven't tinted before, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Is there any way you can turn up the master volume on the stream? It's always way lower than all the other YouTube or music. Um, let me see where my levels are at. That may be. Let's see, we can do a little bit. I gotta play around with it. If I screw around with it too much, on oh, is it this one? Hang on, is that this button? Let me try that one. Hello, that might be a little bit better. I agree with the volume. <laughs> um, so I found pre-cut patterns. Okay, we're losing people. Oh yeah, I use plotter cut tint at a dealership almost every day. Oh, I see. Yeah, for sure. So I, I just suggest something other than Lexan. Um, you could try doing tint zoom. They sell geo kits actually. So if you want to do geo shield kits, you could try that. But yeah, the Lexan kits will be much more inexpensive. So. But yeah, whatever gets you like whatever gets you to that point. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. The only reason I just don't like it is it's a little hazy in the sunlight. So it's not quite as user friendly. But when you're familiar with tinting already, then you can make it work. I've been wanting to ask that for like a year now, but keep forgetting when you're live. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. I mean, how do you forget, though? Because it's always here. Part of it is I actually got to talk into a microphone rather than, like, sit back here. Super chat. Oh. Are they not working? There we go. Sean super well, chatted $5. Dollars. Here's $5 for sweet, sweet audio. Smiley face. <laughs> Sean, thank you so much for the five. I appreciate it. I gotta check why the other one. Maybe it's not plugged in. Oh wait, no, there it goes. <laughs> Should work now. Sometimes it just settings get switched or whatever. But then I gotta do so I gotta tweak the other microphone too. We're speaking of other microphones. I got a customer that got 5% and then wanted to pay her tent ticket because she didn't know dark was illegal. 
I haven't had a I got a Christmas that got five. Oh, that's always fun. I don't know what to, like, in, you can always be sure to mention it, but yeah, yeah, you can't be held responsible for that. You, it, it's, disclosures are helpful, though. I haven't had a card for, like, a month, and then I see whack activity, and the bank is closed today. What a mess. Ugh. Yeah, that sucks. Why are they closed today? Why is everything closed today? What's the holiday? It's Monday. Market's closed today. I want to super chat all the fog. <laughs> what is that? What's Juneteenth? Everybody keeps saying that. You know, I read that a couple times, and I'm like, I don't know what it is. Oh, Slaves Free Day. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense. Gotcha. Another Monday holiday. Cool. Well, I'm working. <laughs> I work on all of the days, though. Memorial Day. I guess, you know, somebody asked, with, they were like, oh, that's, um, I was scheduling something for the 4th, and they're like, oh, that's the 4th of July. Are you open that day? And I'm like, am I? I don't know. Maybe we should do the 5th. Dude, I, it's just, it's been that for a long time. Like, all the, all the regular government holidays and stuff like that I've been over, or I've been working for. Also known as Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, Juneteenth commemorates June 19th when federal troops arrived at Galveston, Texas. I've been there. I've been to Galveston. Uh, I made the Texas and gave the world to say free to African Americans that they were free. Nice. Very cool. I don't know. In this line of work, like if you really want a holiday off, There were just a lot of them that never made sense. Um, there are a lot of them, a lot of those, the holidays, sorry, they do make sense. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of them that, you know, it's just you, you would forget that it's even a holiday because any shop that I worked for was still open. Let's pop this guy on. Oops, this one. So you got to go all the way over there, and then you get rid of it. Camera. Work the holiday because other people have the day off. That might be why I've been getting a bunch of phone calls this morning. That's a good reason to work Sundays, too. Take Mondays off. Do like what a lot of uh, Chinese food places do. Take Mondays off. Work Sundays. Oh, and that's a good point. What the heck? It was yesterday, but that was Father's Day. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with. How hard is it to cut slash trim two pieces of film on a window at a time? Um, I mean, it's marginally harder. It gets frustrating in the very beginning because, yeah, it is twice the thickness, but just practice. No tricks or shortcuts, just practice. You see me do it on a lot of cars. Um, and it sucks when you, when you mess up, uh, when you cut badly and it screws up both patterns and then you're throwing both of them away. But it's such a, what you're really trying to do is save time, so it's totally worth it. Happy late Father's Day, thank you. Oh, and to all the dads out there, absolutely. I'm in that club. 
I hate when I tell people I'm self-employed and they make the, so you're unemployed joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody's told me that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rude. Have you tinted a building? Uh, I was on site for one, twice. Twice I've t had to tint building windows. It's not my jam. Um, but it's very simple. Like, it, it's pretty easy to learn, and it's got a lot of opportunity. Mostly because most shops are automotive, and there are, like, flat glass companies out there, and that's what they specialize in. But the majority of auto places, they don't, they don't handle flat glass because it's easier to stay in one place than run around and do all that. But it's easier to hire a crew of people to handle flat glass. <laughs> I'm expecting a baby, so I got a bunch of happy Father's Day texts yesterday. It was weird. Like, I'm only 20. Chill out. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not dead yet. Damn. Well, congrats, man. That's that's super young. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started. We got a fair amount of work today. It's a smaller vehicle, but it'll probably take me four hours. That's how most of it goes. I want to go get my coffee too. Except for this one, though. Anywhere audio super chatted $20, can you focus on doing a door window, when applying it and have it half peeled, exactly where to do roll it back and not pinch slash fold? Sorry, I'm laughing at another one. Or below the peel? Okay. Anywhere audio, thank you so much for the 20, that's major. Can you focus on doing a door window and then applying it and have it half peeled exactly um, where do you roll it back and not pinch slash fold? Do you do it above or below the peel? So I do it right below the, the liner. But yeah, we can definitely focus on that a little bit more today. Um, it also helps uh, if you shoot me a reminder while I'm getting close to that, because I'll talk about something else and then I'll, I'll be done with the door window and be like, oh shit, I was supposed to do that. Thank you so much, that's a big one. I was laughing at and when my friend, when my friends be like, there's no money uh, in tint, <laughs> it's been frustrating. Yeah, that's crazy. There's definitely money in tint. Um, okay, so how's the road mic then? Let me see the volume settings on this one. Oh, it's not there. Um, I don't know, does this audio sound quiet? Because like my bar goes almost all the way up into the red and sometimes I yell. But that should be, I don't know, that should be pretty good. I just don't like screwing with it too much. Okay, all right. Let me go grab my coffee. Sounds good? Okay, cool. It was probably just the main mic. Exactly right on the liners where I do it, right where the liners folded. So now that I tape things, it's it's up to interpretation there. So I can I'll definitely explain why I do it. God, these are tall windows. So this is like a little car, but these are tall windows for being such a little car. It's kind of like a Honda Fit. Um up until you get to that, that back glass there. And the windshield's not too big either. Tall door windows. All right, let's make sure that's all the way off. Yeah. 
Throw these down. No money intent. That's a funny one. They just don't understand. And that's, that's fine. <laughs> I hear better when you're on the GoPro mic. Sometimes when you turn your head on the Canon mic, it fades. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that's a microphone that you set the, the gain pretty low. Um, and then I'm supposed to actually talk into it, not away from it. So I just don't use it properly. And I also had it turned down a little bit. So I would do a fold on the, on the liner. Um, mostly because at the time when I learned, it made s lots of sense to do it that way. It was a way to peel, peel the film and make sure that a sticky side of the film didn't uh, flip over to the other side. and grab dirt off the seals and stuff like that. So I've just always done it that way. But now that I'm taping things, you could probably change it up a little bit and figure out a spot that works best, but I still teach slash do it that way. The more people that say there's no money in tent means there's more money in tent. <laughs> Pretty much. Because they don't see the opportunity. I mean, even for the people that see an opportunity there that I've worked with that didn't want to do, you know, they, they would get interested in doing it. They would try it and they're like, yeah, that's not for me. So, but just like any business, there can be a lot of money and you can still do very poorly in it. It's how you have everything structured. You know, like retail, like uh, just being even a clothing store. There's good margin in clothing, but how you sell it and what you sell it at, and how much you sell it. It's the only job I found I actually enjoy. Wow, that's cool. When you get past all the hurdles of learning, it's a lot more enjoyable. You still have your frustrating days and situations that you run into. They usually only last for so long though. When I did my 12-year-old truck a few weeks ago, I made sure I cleaned all the seals real good, using the shank for the bottom seals and triage for the sides. Good. That's how I do it. Um, oh, I forget it rained. Let's wipe that off. With that off. It's not dry enough. There we go. What are you doing on this one? We are doing 5% on all the sides and rear. And then we are doing uh, 50, 50 on the windshield. Oh, and we're doing it all in carbon. So that's pretty sweet.
But yeah, Saturday was fun. So we finished up. Did I live stream? I did. I did live stream Saturday. And then afterwards. Um, what car did I do on Saturday? God, time goes. What did we do on Saturday? Somebody remind me. I'll try and remember. Oh, it was that K5. That was a fun project. So we did that K5 on Saturday. They came, they picked it up. Everything was cool. I was all happy. And then uh, as I'm closing up, uh, the landlord showed up. And he's like, hey, how you doing? It's nice to meet you. He's like, what's up, man? We've talked a lot on the phone. Good to meet you, too. And he's like, hey, so your lease is coming due for renewal at October. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, cool. It's going to be $1,000 a month more. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> He was very nice about it, though. <laughs> so, I'm kind of anticipating re-signing. I, I don't really think that I'm going to be able to move anywhere. And I don't, because I've already kind of browsed around a little bit. <sighs> but it was funny, because I opened this place up shortly after a pandemic. And there's lots of shutdowns and stuff. And then, and now when it's time for a lease renewal, of course, I, I go with a two-year lease renewal as everything's at a all-time high right before what might be an epic crash. <laughs> and now I'm sad. I thought most places only go up five to ten percent. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to go up a thousand. But most things probably do go up relatively incrementally. But what we've seen um, in housing and commercial is things have gone friggin' crazy. So I'm paying 2400 And I've said, do you know what would be really nice? Is merging the two together and then living in an epic space and tinting out of there. That would be amazing. That's not going to happen yet. So we kind of figured out our long-term home situation. We're in the middle of, oh, I forgot to hook these up. We're in the middle of a, uh, getting a house, which is super cool. But everything else is, is going up like crazy. So that's over 40%. I know it. So I don't know if this is, how true this is or not, but there's a, the unit you guys have heard getting worked on a handful of weeks ago. I said my neighbors moved out. I don't know who's moving in. He said they were probably going to use it for storage and stuff. Um, he tells me he leased it for above what he's going to lease, release this place to me for. And... Um, and they've, he's, the dude's been super nice. It's quiet here. They make things easy. That's no joke. The, oh, wait, I think I've got a 24-inch roll. Do I? <gasps> I do. Oh, dang, I'm doing five. Hang on one second. Let me get some. Let me get, 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 let me get. You want, I seen like house to house and building a large garage in the back separate from the house for a business. Yeah, that would be like my ideal thing long term. That would be great. However, that's not going to be, that's not going to be anytime soon. 
unfortunately. Ooh, it's right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this roll here. But yeah, I'd say he's been decent. Like one thing um, that was a concern in the beginning was like moving in here. I didn't have much established and you know, we would just move to a new house and we were trying things out of there and I need to move in, needed to move into something quick. And that's when I kind of stumbled into this place. And things that I've really appreciated about it is that it's quiet. There's lots of space and it's quiet. Does it need some work? Yeah, but I had it at nine bucks a square foot, which compared to a lot of other things was less expensive. So it's always possible that things are just getting hiked above where they need to be. But at the same time, I know I had a pretty good price on it and he made things very easy. And I haven't had any real problems. And I've heard some people have real big problems. Is this 50? Ah, shit, I read that wrong. I thought this was five. Hang on. Well, I can't put, I can't put the wrong roll on this. Let me, let me double check here. Where's the five? Oh, are these all 50? I thought one of these was five. Shit. Maybe it's here. If not, I'm just gonna have to use the roll that I already have. Oh my God, it was right here the whole time. We don't wanna do 50, we wanna do five. So that is here. Okay, cool. Didn't you say it's 1,700 square feet? No, this place is 3,300 square feet. This place, this place has space. So 3,300 square feet at 2,400 a month um, is a pretty good rate. I don't have a front door and that's kind of always been annoying and good at the same time because I don't really want to be walking traffic friendly because they don't take same day appointments, but you know, to make it easier to find is always a, is always a good thing, right? <laughs> but it's been, it's been good. So when he came in, I, I honestly thought at the worst it would be three but we've seen, we've seen the market go up much faster than that. So yeah, that's just kind of what it's gonna be. And I don't know, we were looking around a little bit over the weekend to try and find possibly something else, but whatever, Whatever I find is not gonna be cheaper. It would just be a trade-off to find something that's maybe similarly priced, that's more appealing. But again, it's like another couple years into this, it's, it's just slim pickings out there. There's just not, nothing that's super attractive that I wanna get. It's, it's either like, you know, basically a similar setup to this one, where maybe you have a front door, similar type of space, less, more often than not, it's less. So you either go to like probably $5,000 a month and get like a nice, well put together space. Um, so it's just rents more expensive for the same price, but then you're getting a nicer space. Curb appeal is big for business. Curb appeal is, is nice if you want to be found that way. I'm, I'm really unique in that I don't. So that's not, that's not like a hot thing for me. So to save some money, be around back, yeah, I like that. But I'm 
now not saving as much money. Probably still saving a little bit, actually. But so according to the landlord, he's leased the, uh, the unit next to me. Leased that for, I don't know. He's telling me he's leasing that for more than what he's going to renew my lease for. <laughs> Screw curb appeal. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you, it's overrated. It's not that it's, ooh, these are angled. Boy, these are very angled. I think I'm still good though. Do I do this? Or do I keep this path? Yeah, I think we're gonna do it this way. Yeah, so it's overrated to spend a lot to be on a main road. Most people aren't gonna realize you're there anyways. But when they wanna find you, you know, having a front door's nice. <laughs> But these units, these are for like warehouse space. These weren't designed to be retail space, right? It's pretty obvious being around, being around back where it is. But some things that you can't take for granted is how quiet it is. Ooh, this really shifts. That's really tucked in there too. Do this. Shift this down. These are very slanted. So let me just adjust this right. Probably should have, could, or I could have oversized these by a little bit, but. So I think I could find a spot. Um, I think I could find a spot that's kind of in like one of those auto complexes that have a lot of the garage doors and front doors like side by side. Not exactly like a super appealing move, honestly. I'm gonna recut these. I'm not happy with with the way these roll down. These kind of. We shift a little bit more and the inside seal is offset from the outside on this side, on the front side, side side. So I'm gonna make these a little bit wider. I just didn't have that top corner quite as wide as what I thought. Oh yeah, this thing is wired, man. I got I got big big power if I wanted to. Which I don't. I don't need to, but I do have it. Lots of outlets. So like it's easy to definitely look at a space and a number like square footage at face value and then you start thinking about all those little extra things. Like, it's whisper quiet here. I don't have any problems with neighbors, which is awesome. It's wide open. So like, it's really easy. It's really easy to get stuff in and out. I got more than enough room. I can run the classes. Um, the upfront area is nice and done at this point. So 
to go through everything, yeah, it's probably not worth a big change unless I found an awesome space. But after some browsing, I haven't even been able to find a deal. <laughs> Let alone a nice space that's up for grabs. Not unless you really want to go more expensive. So the question is, what do we... There we go. Yeah, that's it, time. Two years went by fast. So do I renew a lease for three years or five years? That's what I'm trying to decide now between. I just kind of said five. And um, so depending on the contract, you know, when you sign a lease at a certain rate, in that contract, you can you can pay taxes. You can do you can have extra responsibilities. It, it's just a straight monthly fee. Like I said, he actually makes things really easy. He's not kidding about that. He's made it easy. He's a nice dude, and uh, um. The, the question, oh yeah, and if he does at least, he's like, we can either do a three year or five year at the same price, however you wanna do it. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna go up. The sad thing is in a crash, then it won't go back down. <laughs> Cause you're locked in. Oh yeah, now I got a lot of space on the sides. You're growing and you don't know how far you go in five years. Yeah. I'm like, I'm stuck though. So I signed a two year lease in the beginning for that exact reason. I'm growing, I don't know how far I'll go. Um, and I wanna do something safe so I didn't get caught in a big problem. There we go. Let me roll this up a little bit. How often do I change my squeegee? So I don't change a, I don't change a squeegee very often, just when it starts leaving streaks, but I have a way to sharpen it so I can use a blade even longer. Hybrids went up to $20. Do this again. It's a fun morning. Uh, any tips on snap shrinking? Um, not really. I can, like, you can you can take your time and wait for it to react. There's a lot of people I saw that put their heat gun really really close, and they just kind of go for it. Don't do that. You need to learn what the film is doing. See that top edge went much nicer. Much, much nicer. They have really rounded corners on these ones too. So we're gonna go straight and then we're gonna push up into that round there over on the board. So yeah, part of me wants to do a three year and I think it's a smart, way to do and the other smart way to do it is five year five year if i know i'm gonna stay here i just don't know i don't know we'll flip a coin
Any tips on tinning a boat? I'm gonna be tinning one outside and they're big. Whew. Doesn't sound like a fun project, honestly. It depends on the boat. They change, they vary a lot. What do you charge for a vehicle like this? So this one in carbon with the windshield is 550. You have time to think about it. You're adding classes, got a new hire, looking at a house, don't lock yourself in for five years. Well, we're locked into a house for 30. <laughs> so like little things are really nice. Like it's, it's super convenient for me to get back home. I actually really like that now. I'm gonna round this just a little bit more. See, I know. If you want to move in a couple of years. Yeah, it's just it. Like, so during the last two years, I had time to look around and I just didn't. I just kept improving this place. So like five years is a long time from now. I almost feel like it's gonna be the same, where it's like, it all sounds nice, and then it's just two, three, four years go by, and then eventually my lease will come up from a renewal and then I'll make a decision. But it's kind of crazy to think that far out. I mean, the other side of it, the worst that's gonna happen is it's gonna be $3,400 a month, I'm in a lease, and then I'll be up for a renewal and it'll be, Possibly, <laughs> possibly another grand more, which, I mean, is it really that bad three years from now? Maybe, I don't know, it depends on what's going on here. Look into buying your own spot. Man. That sounds all well and good. I would love to actually buy a physical space. <laughs> I just don't even know where to start. How much do you gotta put down on a commercial building? Commercial buildings are way more expensive too. You're talking about zoning and all that. I'm not a property developer. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a crash. I mean, the market's already tanking. There's inflation spiking. There's good reason. It's just like, how much is going to happen? I don't know. It's probably going to be pretty bad. But as prices go down, rates go up, at least for the time being. I mean, the, you know what the real solution is? The real solution is just make more money and none of it matters. <laughs> How much is it? I don't know, we got more money to cover it, whatever. Just throwing out what's going on. I don't know, I, I, I genuinely like, I'm pretty set on five year and then I think about it and like, maybe I should do three year, maybe I should do five year. Then I get set on three year and then I go back, it's just, I'm gonna have them rewrite the lease like 50 times. I'm like, just have two copies and I'll send you one. <laughs> Write up both, you'll get one of them signed. <laughs> Interest rates are at all time high right now. No, they're not at all time high right now. They just went up. They just started going back up. They've been really low for a long time. I think they're more like housing interest rates are more, <laughs> more normal. <laughs> But they just went back up really, really quickly.
yeah, it's, I think interest rates are definitely going to go up higher than where they're at. It's annoying that they went up so fast. Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Good. How are you doing? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, unfortunately, I'm all booked up today. The earliest that I have, uh, depends on what the job is, would be Friday. Two front windows? Um, yeah, I could get that done Friday. So I'm in Sterling Heights near uh, 18 and Mound. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's like a tire shop near here and stuff. Um, so this Friday, let me see. I'm just double checking the schedule here because I had somebody else that might. Oh, earliest I have is uh, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. on Friday. Uh, so front doors start at 120. Uh, that's in a color stable dyed film. I do have some better options if you're interested in carbon and ceramic films, but I can talk to you more about that at the appointment. Okay, um, I'll mark you down. Uh, we do take a deposit to hold the appointment uh, and confirm it. So I'll text you a link to our site, and once I get that, you'll be all set for Friday. All right, cool. I'll shoot that right over. All right, bye. All right, we might have one for Friday. Thanks for scheduling your front for Friday at 2 p.m. professional AF. No, I, I messed it up a little bit. Thanks for scheduling your Okay, there we go. That's sent. My first house interest rate in the early 2000s, six point something. That was a good taste. Yeah, they're, they're back up there now. We paid 8% in 2006. I thought that was great. <laughs> I'm just a little salty, so I like we've been uh, uh, we're we're getting a house, and this started in November. I haven't really talked about it. Um, this started in like end of November, early December, because we've been running for a long time. And I've talked about moving out of state. We're not moving out of state. <laughs> Just, you know, throwing around ideas and stuff. Um, but we found this one place. It's super nice. Um, and then it was kind of just, you know, one of those things where you didn't necessarily think could happen or would happen. And then it just, yeah, it's, it's happening. So that's really, really cool. Um, but then at the time, interest rates were three, three and a half. And so it's really sad to see them at that point. And then during this time, it's gone. <laughs> so we're, we're rate locked at five. Which is good and also a little annoying. So I don't know. There's there's some things that I can get really really poorly on timing, and it seems like some of these <laughs> some of these things are really bad. So start you know decided to do my own thing, and that started out near the beginning of the pandemic. Then fast forward two years up for a lease renewal after everything surges a bunch. And it's like, oh, great.
And then now with this too, it's like, ugh, still not bad, but to have house prices where they're at, like we caught it early, but not as early as what we could have. Ooh, that's gonna get rounded a little bit more. Yeah, these things, man. This reminds me a little bit of the, uh, Tacoma? Tacoma or Tundra, they like to do this on those, where they basically just like over round all the corners and stuff. Just wanna make sure that you get it matched up as close as you can before you put it in there because you're not doing it after the fact. Then it goes flat over and then all of a sudden rounds off quite a bit here. There, see, that's better. And then how's that line up with this one? Nice. That should be pretty good right there. Sweet. But it's nice. I got it all day with this one. But we also got to set up for classes tomorrow. How's it going? Good? Good. Okay, perfect. That's Jack. He's throwing together glass aid rolls for sun distributing. And then we got to pick up tool sets for tomorrow. And then he's gonna help out with classes. Except for Wednesday. He got hit with jury duty on Wednesday. <laughs> like what timing? <laughs> that sucks. It's not even the fun trial. The Johnny Depp trial is over. Every other case is now going to be boring. <sighs> what site for a deposit? So I take deposits through my website. It's built on Wix, and they have a little booking calendar slash way to take deposits. It's been helpful. I'm going to have to reorganize it a little bit more because I have people leave deposits. Um, and so it, it's, uh, that's, it's why I don't even have to take any info over the phone. So I go here, leave a deposit and then it'll have like their name, their name, uh, a contact and the time and day that it, the, the work is getting done. So I got to refine it a little bit more so I specify like the car, probably the car and how much work that we're doing to it because then I have to go back through messages and stuff to figure out what that is. So I'm going to tweak it a little bit, but it's really helpful. Yeah, I got, I got really annoyed with even taking same day appointments. There's a lot of places that can service same day appointments. I think that's what keeps most front door appointments away from here. And then as the full car stuff gets booked out, it's mostly what I get phone calls about. And then that builds more of that business. Yeah, no show suck. For sure. You're going to run into that a ton when you're a new business. So very quickly, like after being, having a spot for, for like a month, I'm like, yeah, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And all it's for, all it's for is to filter out people that are just very impulsive. 
Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Yeah. Uh, no. You know what? I might have changed. <laughs> Shoot, did I really do that? Does it does it say it changed to the fifth? Oh, uh, okay. And it's supposed to be the twenty eighth. Okay, okay. Let me switch it back. I had somebody else with the thirtieth. I'm glad you called about that. I had somebody else with a 30th um, change to the 5th. So I just clicked on the wrong name and switched it around. So we're the 28th at 10 AM. OK. <laughs> no, I'm glad you caught it. You, you know, with all, this, with all the high tech stuff, man, it, I still make mistakes on my end, so. <laughs> Yeah, right? You just go back to good old-fashioned pen and paper. All right, cool. I got it switched over, so everything should be good. I'm going to move this one then. This is, the, yep, this is the one that I should have moved. God, I, had, I thought I had this all set up. All righty. Yep, you're all, you're all good for that day. All right, no problem. Bye. <laughs> Thirtieth moves. I'm just a dumb dumb sometimes. So there was this. Uh, this, this goes back into that calendar and that booking stuff. So I had an appointment scheduled for the thirtieth, and then he gave me a heads up that that day might change uh, based on the delivery of his car, and that date did change, so then we moved it over to the 5th. But I clicked on somebody else's name, and I moved them to the 5th. <laughs> and then he just called, and he was like, hey. All good. All right, everything should be all good now. <laughs> what a rookie. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Subaru took me to school with rain guards and tight garters. Oof. Ooh, that's especially bad when you get the rain guards in there. The roll downs are so much easier. Those ones are so much easier. And then you get to the quarter windows and you're like, why they do this? Sharpie the quarter windows. Oh God, why is it, see this, this dumb window. Does anybody know how to get rid of this dumb window? You hover over it, boom. It takes up your entire screen and it's all stuff that you don't care about. Sharp, oh, but what you're saying, Sharpie the quarters and then it makes them easier. Really? I always, I always hand cut those because I figured with a Sharpie you can't quite see your edge. Because... Because there's like a thickness to that Sharpie. So it kind of makes that edge unclear exactly where to cut it. It's interesting.
cut them a little wide. Hmm. Fair enough. All right. I, I remember now. We got to talk about door window installation. So I got plenty of room on the top and like on the sides. I got lots of lots of space to work with. So I'll pick it up. Hand is arm is like right where that liner is. And then we're gonna roll this side all the way up. And we kind of let the other side just hang off the window. Because all I need to worry about is first tucking this part in. So where I roll it up, I fold it is like probably about a half inch to a quarter inch below where that liner is. Um, the reason that I've always been doing it that way, shift it up and down, it's starting to stick, it's starting to stick. No, let's just get you in place. There we go, now it's in place. The reason I've been doing it that way um, is because for a long time I wasn't taping seals. So all the film that is exposed is against the glass sliding into the seal. Same thing with the other side, right? So we've Fold it up right below the liner. And when I say fold, it's more like a light roll on that. So it's loosely rolled up. Tuck that other side in and then just line it up at the top. But now that we're putting tape on side seals, it's, it's clean. It's much cleaner than like an old felt seal or something like that. So, you could probably do this a number of different ways and still have really, really good results. So it's up to you, but that's where I do it. If you find rolling it up in the tint portion of it works better, then hey, do that. get that lock in place, roll it up. Um, one little side effect of keeping it like this, is so whenever I go to pull this corner out with the liner, the way I unroll it out, it all of a sudden flips to this way. And then same thing with this. So the way I pull that liner out kind of gets my film to already roll in this way a little bit. So then it's rinse your film down, rinse the bottom down, and then this will already be set up to slide nice and easy into your side seals. So corners down below the seal, make that nice and flat against the glass. Tuck a little bit on one side, tuck a little bit on the other. Pull the seal back and start getting that film to go under. I roll my tint the opposite way so there's no creases. Nice. You should definitely post a video of that. I'd love to see it. I've messed around with a couple of different ways. I haven't put a lot of effort into doing it differently. One of the reasons I like um, folding it up this way, and it makes a lot of sense when you get into, so like, on this window, it's it's super easy, and you got a lot of room. When it comes to a, what is it? Let's say, not quite a Lexus, but something that's a lot more pinched down at the end. When you roll your film up, it just, it nothing's butting up against the bottom panel here. Nothing's fighting with it. So, we're rolling it up underneath it, I would love to see it on something that's a little bit more low profile and just kind of how you handle that. Be cool to see. Post it in the group.
Um, I don't usually Sharpie, but those I do every time. That's cool. Yeah, there's always little tricks and differences on, on particular cars where you're not always going to do something, and then this one little method helps you, especially in that situation. It's good to know about the Sharpie. At this point, I go right to the, uh, right to the plotter. That makes my life a little bit easier, at least when it all works out. What did I do wrong if I get fingers on the sides? You didn't shrink it. You gotta shrink it. And if you shrunk it and you still have fingers on the side, that means that you gotta shrink it more. Oh yeah, that's especially handy. Mm-hmm. Saw a tip the other day. So on the areas where you have to fold the film, you get a little pinch there. Garrett says if you put a hard card with a paper towel, put some heat, pretty much disappears with one swipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you block off all that water and you basically allow the entire thing to dry out, that is then just all warm, tacky glue. That's, you know, sometimes why you gotta press it out three, four times. It's just, you can stand there and be impatient. So if you let it dry for long enough, then it's only one swipe go, but water will sit in there for quite a while. So yeah, doing something like that, with the paper towel especially, as long as you get the space for it. Good stuff. I like it. Yeah, we're doing five. We're going very dark. So we're doing five on all the sides and rear, and then we're gonna do uh, 50 on the windshield. Good. Been tinning on and off for about a year. I'll take all the tips I can get. Same here, man. I still pay attention. There's lots of good stuff that gets shared. That's how, that's how I learned everything. I mean, because why wouldn't you? You can only do and figure out so much and then watch a bunch of other people and then just kind of pick and choose little things that you find helpful, add it to your own thing. The only thing that really ruins people is having a lot of pride in doing things one particular way that haven't really looked into anything else. You should always have very clear reasons for every little thing that you do. <laughs> Ended up teaching a Lumar rep a few things. <laughs> And that Lumar rep goes to all the other Lumar shops and goes, hey, you know what you guys should do?
I can tell, wait, there's still soap coming up out of the top of my doors after four weeks? <laughs> That's not soap, there's no way. Windows dry out within a matter of, uh, of days, not weeks slash months later. So whatever it is, I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a little concerned. How many times will you clean the sides? Uh, once or twice. There, you don't have to do a lot to have a really clean result. Most of your problems are from installing, not from cleaning. So really, like, it's just something you always got to wrap your head around. Unfortunately, you are the reason why. It's soap. You should definitely take a video of it and post it. But I don't think anybody's seen that, unless you just tinted it with only soap. <laughs> so you don't get creases when you fold it up on the sides like that. This is a little bit like the uh, defroster conversation the other day. So you can get folds on the side. You just dry them out and press them flat. It's not something that's, a, it, that's an issue. You just gotta know how to touch up your window, right? <laughs> that might be way too much soap. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard a month later that soap is still coming out of between the film and the glass. Like, it, everything should be dry within a matter of days. So, like, even water sitting in between film and glass. Like, even if there's a lot of it, four weeks later, now oh, that shit's gone. So, it's really confusing. Sounds weird. I want to see a video though. Posted in the window tint stuff Facebook group. <laughs> I'm really curious. <sighs> Canon. I have a I have a fix for your annoying pop-up. Really? Right-click on your taskbar, go up to search, and uncheck open on hover. Wait. Right-click on your taskbar, go up to search. Oh my god, there it is. Okay, here. So this, there's a taskbar right below this window. Every time my mouse falls down, it lands on this little box that they moved over from the right side and this window pops up. Thank you, oh my God. So if you right click on it, which you, hang on, let me get rid of the window. Right click on it, go up to search, open on hover, boom. No, it's not gonna do that, thank you. Show search highlights. Oh, and you can even uncheck show search highlights. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just couldn't for the life of me find that. It's gone. I think they intentionally made it just annoying enough to try and find, but then also go, oh, yeah, you can disable it if you want. People like it. No, nobody likes that. Thank you, because my keyboard is on a slant. So every time I drop my mouse, it falls right on that box. 
and then I go over to this monitor too, and that window is open. And I'm like, and my chat is covered again. Whoa! <laughs> Swole gang! Swole gang super chatted $4.99. Finally have money to super chat. I sold my four-year-old truck for more than I bought it for four years ago. Crazy. <laughs> Swole gang with a five. Thank you. Finally have money to super chat. I sold my four-year-old truck for more than I bought it for four years ago. Crazy. Damn. Isn't that a crazy market? Speaking of selling things. Yeah, there's a there's a few things that I haven't I haven't talked about. Thank you so much. Don't feel like you ever have to super chat though. But yeah, the used market is nuts. Inventory shortages, used cars being sold for more than uh, MSRP, more than you can you know. Lots of people that come in here have told me they're like, yeah, it's cheaper to buy a new car than it is a used car right now. That's all just crazy talk, but it's true. Because people can't get stuff, so then they're just overpaying for used things. I work at a dealership. Most of our vehicles are probably 5K around sticker price. Yep. Yep, and there's a waiting list on so much. And as soon as something comes in, it gets snapped up. So people get used to this trend and then it perpetuates. It's, it's insane. But you either, either embrace it or <laughs> you just sit back and ignore it. <laughs> Can your tint shop accept text? Yes, yes it can. Yeah. Yeah, Ford wants to cut out dealerships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if dealerships will become service centers. I think they're testing that with all their EVs. That's been a big uh, weird situation for a long time anyways. You know, dealerships were very upset that Tesla was not going that route and they were trying to make it impossible. And still in some states, it's not possible. I think Michigan is one of those states where um, you have to buy a Tesla out of state. Maybe it's different now, but for a while it was like that. I haven't paid attention. You had to go to like Chicago or something to go buy it. See a couple sprays, a couple squeegees, and then we're ready to install it. Nothing too crazy. Peel this window halfway, a little more than halfway. Any tips on getting sideways fingers to lay down? Shrink the window better before you install it. When you have fingers popping out of the sides, it's kind of a, it's a losing battle. You wanna prevent those from ever being a thing. You gotta shrink your windows more. So every, every window is, oh my God. <clears throat> oh, we got, we got stuck. Oh, it's really grabby there. 
Every window is going to be a little bit different on what you have to shrink, but that's why they're that's why they're popping up in the first place. Fusion all type is cheaper. I wasn't a fan of it though. I'm honestly not a fan of any of them anymore. So when I was using adhesives that slid nice and freely, then I was open to using other types of slip solutions. I've had to go kind of extreme. So baby shampoo slash, uh, slash Dawn. And yeah, yeah, unfortunately the price has gone up, but you'll see that stuff go up too. <laughs> Shit. The hybrid last time I looked was was $17 and then I looked again and now it's $20. Who owns uh, all type <laughs> fusion? <laughs> the super sticky expel recommends you use all type. Um, yeah, I just I wasn't a fan. I don't know. I've tried it. I have it. I have it sitting over there too. It's been a while since I've tried it though. <laughs> what was the question I was going to ask? Are ads better for your first few customers or best to approach best to approach people in person better? Oh. Um, no, however you can get business. You have if you have to put out ads, put out ads. The hardest part is just to get the ball rolling. So just do any avenue that you can. So a big, a big way to just start getting inquiries is Google Maps. Google Maps, Apple Maps, get listed and start existing. Then you can be found. Have a website. Um, website is, it's, import, it's important to have and it will help you get found, but usually Google Maps is going to be a quick way to, to immediately start getting uh, more inquiries and stuff like that. And then what you're going to find is there's going to be a lot of people that are just price shopping. <laughs> Put business cards in wipers of fish bowls. Man, I hate that. I had a... There's, there's some people that will recommend that, and maybe it just depends on the area that you live in. I, I don't touch other people's cars, and I would definitely not go to some place that dropped a business card. It's desperate. It's Jeff Britton. Yo, dog, don't touch my shit. People around here wouldn't like it. So I don't know, the, the hustle ways of doing it is, you know, you can go to existing places of business, drop off business cards maybe, um, but really it's, it's, it's about being found for when people are trying to find you. So one of the biggest places that anybody looks for business is going to be Maps. Maps, Google. Honestly, Facebook was kind of like subpar. It was okay. Ooh, dang, I haven't seen that in a while. I got a big old speck right there. Um, I slide them into door seals. <laughs> I do it carefully. I haven't had anybody message me complaining. I wouldn't message you complaining. I would just not go to you. So, like I said, I don't, I don't know. It depends on the area that you live in. And maybe it's a numbers game, and somebody will eventually reach out out of however many people that you let it in. Maybe it's a small, towny thing. Like, you know, I, I have no idea. 
I just wouldn't like it. So it depends on, you know, a lot of little subtle culture things. <laughs> so it could be just area. How much more instruction do you give in your class than we are seeing on your live streams? Um, well, the way, what you don't see in the classes are are all the little mistakes from people because that doesn't happen to me a lot of time. I still make mistakes and you see when those happen, like now there's a, there's a big speck in my window and there's no way for me to make it look pretty so I just pulled it off and I'm redoing it. But as far as like everything that gets done, this is it, dude. They're like, it's a, it's a full car, start to finish. I can't like, I can't hide anything in here. This is, this is the process. So whatever questions that you have about it, I can best answer slash show. Um, in the classes, what people really find helpful are the immediate corrections. So when they're learning how to shrink, I show it a million times, and people still figure out how to not do it right. <laughs> so it's, it's just like, no, 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 put the heat here, watch for this, keep going, keep going, stop. You know, all those little things. Some people pick it up faster, some people pick it up slower. Like, it it's all depends on the person. But we go through, we go through everything in three days. And so if you're new, it's not going to make you a tenor. If you've been tinning for a little while, what it's going to do is it's going to be a big confidence boost, and it's going to help speed you up a lot. I'm pretty confident in saying that now after seeing the other classes, especially from the last class. There was a, like, it was, it's especially encouraging when you get people that have been tinting for, like, even six months to a year. They can do cars. They're just, like, you know, there's a couple guys they weren't doing windshields yet. And it's like, all right, let's focus on some windshields. But yeah, everybody that's come out here, as far as I know, they've been really happy. As far as they tell me. You just have one of those big, obnoxious specs. One of those big, obnoxious specs that you're like, how did you get in there? And I took it out by removing the whole window. For the class, do we practice on our personal cars? Uh, no, but you can. So I have space to pull in, um, to pull in extra extra cars. Um, but we've got uh, an Altima and a Blazer in the very beginning to practice on, and then it's kind of just, you know, if you want to, absolutely we can pull it in. But you have your own cars to practice on at home. So it's nice to have something a little different and kind of set up for that. And a big part of it, like I said, is, is just getting the right instructions. So I have like easy slash moderate things to work on. So you learn a lot for sure. You can learn so much off of just one car. Like even this car, I could tint this, like if I was new, I could tint this 20 times over 
and be reasonably proficient at it and still learn more stuff the more I keep doing it. Some people, they just tint their own car once and they go, okay, I need something else. It's like, Fuck no, rip that off and start again. Every time you redo it, you take something new with you. Two, keep getting speckles from where I fold the film during two stage. Use, uh, use some tape on the sides if you haven't already. That'll help, that'll help a bunch. So yeah, that one speck that was there, it was just a bigger dark speck, and you're talking about a driver's window. So you have seals basically keeping all that stuff um, like locked into the sides. It's, it's just gonna be a headache to try and pull it back get rid of that one big speck. On a windshield, that's different. It's not trying to hold all the sides down. But on door windows, it can be especially hard just to take care of one speck. Unless it's like frameless or something, you can get to it easily. The more, like I say, the more you gotta fight with something, the worse it's gonna turn out. You're like a, <laughs> you're like a pro athlete. Careful, I work with my hands. Yes, my hands are insured up to a million dollars right now. No, that would be a, like, it has crossed my mind. Like, oh shit, I hope this doesn't like screw up my hand for a month. That would suck. super glue anytime I cut myself. You just keep letting it bleed until it finally stops. Because <laughs> I don't have a band-aid sitting around. All right, that's up. Okay, so for snap shrinking, I point, so the heat gun and is a circle. And so I basically point the half circle, like the top half of that circle at the very bottom of the, at the bottom edge of the film. So I'm really, I'm, I'm trying to get the very edge and like a half inch up from there to curl. That's usually where the most amount of things are gonna pull together. And then you can shrink a little bit higher than that, but What you're trying to do is just create a curve that takes care of all those fingers. So if that's too confusing, then go back to just shrinking individual fingers until they're all gone and then, and then your window's shrunk enough. Like if snap shrinking is really hard for you to, to get your mind around, then Move all the fingers down to the bottom, shrink all the fingers, and install the film. And then if you still get a couple little fingers at the bottom, well then just force some extra fingers. Like push the film together a little bit and just over shrink it a little bit more. Some people do this, what they call a double snap. 
I don't like it because it adds an extra set. You just gotta get used to looking for the right things. But, so in a double snap, they'll basically, they'll have fingers popping up off the bottom. They'll shrink those fingers. Then they'll lift the film afterwards, let it float, and then kind of re-shrink it flat. And that's a way to, that's a way to ensure everything shrunk. Look, I don't have a big speck there now, which you probably couldn't have seen anyways. But it was annoying. The rest of it looked really good. And then there was just like, boom. Would have sucked. The container you're using to apply slip solution really needs to be a dedicated bottle and kept clean. Yes. Yeah, so you're gonna have to wash it out. Haven't used my keg for one and a half months and had soap water sitting in any specific way to clean it. Um, so you're just gonna wanna scrub it out and flush all the, flush all the water out. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I had it taped down. Locked myself out of the car. Dumb pegs. <sighs> so, if you've got one of the good hoses, so either like a Flexilla hose or the Tint Keg blue hose, those will both be really nice um, and stay clean even if you have stuff sitting in there for a long time. If you get the cheap plastic hoses, they might stink. Kind of a side effect of those. You can find really cheap hoses, but they start to stink after like six months. Lots of buildup on those. But yeah, you can leave your keg sitting for a long time and still clean it out. Um, you can go as far as removing the ball lock um, and cleaning out the dip tube if you want. To be honest, I've never cleaned out a dip tube, ever. But yeah, I've definitely had water sitting in a keg for a while and plenty of buildup. I mean, when you're tinning every day. When you're tinning every day, like there would be probably good months where I wouldn't scrub out my keg. The only bad thing that really happens is, uh, oh yeah, I gotta press and hold this. Come on. Ding. All right, what's going on here? <laughs> so as long as you're not busy, don't buy a keg. I wonder if the battery died on this one. Could be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's dead. We're gonna put a charger on this thing. Yeah, so a three, a three gallon keg, like if you're not tinning regularly, your water's gonna sit a lot. So yeah, it, it's unfortunately not ideal because of the buildup or when you're done with it, just open it up, dump all the water out and then, and then store it without everything sitting in it. my wow I am blind where do we put where did I put the charger oh I hid it under a table under a blanket that's why I couldn't find it alrighty 
You got 300? Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we'll box them up. Let me, let me throw this on the charger really quick. And then I'll help you get them boxed up in something. That simmer cannon. All right, I gotta box up some glasses really quick, and then send uh, send him on his way. We'll hang tight. I don't think they're, for whatever reason, I don't think they're on, uh, on Apple Maps. Let's see. No, they're not. Well, guys, why isn't Sun Distributing on, on Apple Maps? So I always got to go to Google. Because Rick doesn't have an iPhone. Okay, there you are. Apple Maps are trash. Not anymore, they're not. Dude, I can't, t they used to be. I can't tell you how much better they've been than Google Maps around here with all the road closures and stuff. It's been crazy. We did side by side. Google Maps kept taking me down routes that were already closed. Apple Maps routed me around every single one of them. So, I love Google Maps. They just, they let me down recently. Mm. Okay. You should have the uh, you should have the address. Um, yeah, I, I can for whatever reason like I said they're on uh, Google Maps. Sun distributing though is the business. Um, if you follow that, you'll make a left onto uh, Board Board Street or whatever that road is, and they're on your right hand side. So they don't have like a big sign or anything on the building. They're just an older looking building. We drive. Uh, 
Helios is solid. See, that's so handy. Now I don't have to run out there. And I can get this stuff done. Yay, help. Helios is uh, sun distributing, yeah. Use carbon for 60 inch, of, uh, 60 inch roll is 130 bucks. Ooh, that is cheap. Oh, it's a good brand of ceramic. Um, Helios is good, GeoShield's good. There's lots of good, um, good films out there. Those are just ones I always recommend. Because being able to get some of those good films is, is also a headache. <laughs> If there isn't anything else that you've ordered already. <sighs> you hired somebody? I did. So he has successfully left, left his other job, and now i got to make sure I keep him busy. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Super nice guy. He uh, called around, was looking for a job. Good timing, came in, showed up, and now he just boxed together 300, uh, 300 rolls, and he's going to take them out to Sun Distributing and then pick up the tools for the class. Then I can keep on tinting. It's funny, like, we're... We're like 20, 25 minutes away from Sun Distributing. Like, what's up? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll see you soon. Let me know if you have any problems. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask how he's working out, but it must be great since he quit his job. Yeah, so he... Um, he was here that Monday, and I thought we would have him Saturday, but um, but he was only here for like a couple of days. <laughs> so it was it was one of those things where we were gonna try another week, um, but I've got the class this week, so it's kind of like, hey, dude, no worries. You want to get started? Let's see how this works out. Oh yeah, I gotta turn this on. This one died. There we go. Um, so this has privacy glass and you're putting five over that? Yes. Put your hinge in the rear wiper? I do. Yes, I do know that, but thank you. <laughs> On this one, unfortunately, it doesn't have a hinge. <laughs> this is all one solid piece here. So you actually got to take that off. But that is a handy little trick. Having problems in the roll size, what do you recommend? How many cars can you do? Okay, so for ordering film, um, out of a 36 by 100 foot roll, with no mistakes, pretty much, you can do like eight full cars. <laughs> it's all good. And then I forgot how many front doors you can do. 
out of a 100 foot roll. I think it's like 15, 16 sets of front doors that you can do out of a short roll, something like that. So you can get, you can get a lot of work done off of a roll of film, which is why like, you know, this debate always comes up about, about film pricing. You know, the cost difference per car from using like a, a cheap carbon film versus like a better one, the, the cost of the roll may be double. The cost per car is like, <laughs> like 10 to 20 bucks. <laughs> it's not significant. So just use something better. That's my argument for it. It's like, well, why wouldn't you? But, you know, don't take that if you're just starting out or, or whatever, you need to save every penny that you can. Like, I just establish places, depending on your demographic. Generally, people undervalue their service. And tough markets will cause them to keep undervaluing their service. And that's always a sad thing to, uh, sad thing to see. You get those customers that try and beat you up a lot. figure he had it handled though. That's cool. So it's nice. I'm going to have them pre-packaged rolls together ahead of time. <laughs> We're going to set up all the tools and stuff here. So Jack's going to be in charge of handling most of that. two cars with the plotter. Yeah, if you put it through the film stretcher first. <laughs> mm hmm yep, his name's Jack. I'm doing things weird. I went to ASWA Film Store, I spent 703 rolls. I went to the Galaxy Store and they have iFilm for 60. They said glue wasn't going to wasn't going well, so they're selling it for 60 a roll. It's great. Oh, God. <laughs> the glue isn't going well, so here, it's discounted. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it depends on how you sell it. I've been part of a discount. <laughs> I've... <laughs> Sorry, I've had I've had discounted rolls, stuff like that. It so you you either get um so if it's like a reputable brand, sometimes they'll have they'll have a clearance and try and get rid of extra short rolls, stuff like that, stuff that they don't sell quite as frequently. <laughs> 
But when they're trying to like, oh yeah, I got a sweet deal on a ton of film. This is great. This shit, depending on how you sell it, this shit will bite you in the ass so hard. Unless you just like discount it out the door and say whatever. But don't take my word for it. Discounted out the door, no warranty. Mm-hmm. I mixed that up lately, I don't know why. Okay, there's that. Enter. Okay, we need film cut here. Canon. You can get short rolls. Geo has short rolls on discount right now. So what happens is they will sell, like this goes for a lot of film companies. People buy more long rolls than short rolls. So eventually they build up such a short roll inventory that they just want to clear it out for new stuff that's coming in. That's a good deal. Um, we need a Buick. But if you got a film that's like, hey, yeah, I got this miscellaneous film. I don't know, it's supposed to be good. I'm just trying to clearance it out of my warehouse. It's like, don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. GoPro. Don't specify how short the rolls are. Well, you should be able to know, like, if it's a 24 or a 20. But they'll be 100 foot. If somebody comes in for front doors, do you charge extra for the quarter windows? For a long time I did. Now I just made the front doors cost what they need to, and then I don't, I don't worry about it. But I would quote it accordingly, just from the very beginning. So like when we were doing wholesale, um, we would build the shops more for it. And it got really annoying because there were so many times that it was like, hey, this says front quarters. Did you charge for that? Oh, shit. Hang on. Let me go talk to the customer now. That was that got super annoying. That went on for years. They never learned. But with so many vehicles having them on, I, if you want to make it easy, just either keep a mental note and... Uh, you know, just quote whatever it is. Like, yeah, there's four windows on that. This is how much it costs. Or, yeah, this is how much your vehicle costs. I was talking about the short rolls. They don't say 25 by, oh, that's weird, they should. I haven't seen the sale though. Stock up. You use it eventually. Just like lease a building for longer. <laughs> Cause you'll be there for longer than you think.
Oh, what? Oh, no, that's right. Come on, Plotter. <laughs> How is it working in a dust-free shop? Uh, oh, it's nice. Downwind from a body shop, yikes. That sucks. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about the sale. I'm hearing something about like weird lengths. That's not how rolls are sold. They're not gonna ship you a bunch of pieces. I mean, if they did, that's incredibly weird. So it'll be, any of those sales are pretty straightforward. If they don't say the size of the rolls, you can probably just call and ask. Well, you can, you can call and ask them, hey, it's not listed because maybe they forgot. But you would know what you're buying ahead of time. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Uh, not today, the earliest that I have is gonna be next week. Um, let me check here. What kind of vehicle do you have? Compass? Okay. What were you look to uh what were you looking to get tinted? Or sorry, what uh what were you looking to tint on the compass? Okay, all the sides and the rear. Did you want to do a full windshield? Okay. I'm um, checking the calendar here. See where I can slot you in. Oh, sh oh wait, no, that's this week. So this week is that. Next week is that. The Monday, the twenty seventh. I can get you in at ten a.m. Oh yeah, for sure. So um, all the sides in the rear on that they start at two ninety. Uh, that's in a color stable dyed film. We also have carbon and ceramic films. So the carbon uh, is what I recommend the most. Gives you a 50% heat reduction. Uh, that'll run 350. Uh, and the ceramic, that's my top of the line. That'll be 450. Nope, you can mix and match uh, whichever shades in the particular films. Okay, yeah, no worries. Um, you can definitely do that. Uh, we do, um, and then uh, I was gonna say, after that we will text you a link um, to confirm the, the appointment. Um, it's a $40 deposit, goes straight towards the balance, uh, just to ensure somebody's gonna hold the spot. Uh, 450 for ceramic. Mm -hmm. All right, no problem. <laughs> Still live, woot. A 36 covered, a uh, 3500 RAM for the windshield. 
for me, so I'm thinking it's good. But like I said, mark measure in the middle of the edge. <laughs> Matt has that customer service voice. You have to sound a little upbeat. Try and break the monotone. Yikes. So from here, it doesn't have a gap. From here, it does. This edge, though. Let me see if I can. I don't think these are necessarily cut wrong. It's just got one of these weird rubber edges on it that I think I need to free up beforehand. Or I'll hand cut it. But it kind of pinches right there. Let me cut out another one. Haven't seen you in a while. Do you remember me? B711 HD. Yeah. What's up, man? Ooh, I gotta shave these rollers down. So I'll have two for the other side. Just get that little weird. Cut that little weird thingy. So I gotta make sure. Compensate for it. <laughs> we get about 30 cards a day tinting. Nice. Busy place. That's awesome. Now you can really see what a regular shop is like. It's move, move, move. This is for the other side. This is for the passenger side. I don't like doing that anymore. I got that owner syndrome where I want to go at a slow pace. Let's try this again. From Tuesday to Saturday, we're open. Oh, I like that. So then you're closed Monday and Sunday, so you got a couple days in a row. That's a good way to do it. So this really needs to slide in here a little farther. This seal, you just gotta free it up a little bit so it does still pinches. Something like that. I'm gonna try and take over those corners. Ooh, got it. See if we'll get this top one. Perfect. That's what we want to see. Yeah, some places um, kind of just depends on where you're at and how you get the ball rolling. Dude, you can be crazy busy. Especially this season. I mean, we saw a lot of that after the shutdowns, things got like, things got crazy busy for a lot of people. Gave me, honestly, a lot more opportunity uh, as they opened back up. So that was really nice to see. Because there were shops, they were booked out for months at a time. So then people are like, man, I don't care how much it costs. I just need to get my car changed somewhere. But I think now we're seeing a lot of that demand has been um, caught up with. 
but there's still plenty of demand. But you're getting a couple things together. You're getting a slowdown in sales because they can't keep up with inventory. And you're getting uh, just general inflation so people doesn't, don't have as much money to spend. It'll have an impact. My uh, my dad started at the beginning of the, was it then? 2007, 2008, 2009, like right in the housing market crash, Auditon City started, so. Plenty enough, here we go. Not my shop, which it was. Uh, my boss, we get 30 cars a day. Yeah, I remember that. I was just saying, like, that's awesome, staying super busy. That's cool. All right, let's take one of these over to the other side. Did the customer flinch at 450 for the ceramic job a minute ago? Um, I don't know, maybe. I just like to give them the options ahead of time. It's kind of a lot over the phone. Honestly, I should just change it. Um, it's okay. But there's, there's some people that'll call and they're just looking for, you know, it just the idea of a tint job is like, is enough. Let alone, you know, then you get into percentages and then you get into other types of films. So it's like when you get into that third part with other types of films, it's like, okay, now you're trying to tell them something over the phone and it becomes information overload. So some people are like, oh yeah, I was looking for ceramic, thank you. And then some other people are like, uh. <laughs> Is that a standard price for ceramic? Um, yes and no. Depends on where you are and depends on what ceramic you're selling. I don't really think there are, there really aren't standard pricings. There's just, what you'll find is in your area, certain people will charge certain amounts. Some people hear 450 and go, oh God, that's expensive. Some people hear 450 and go, oh, that's it. We get 550, we get 650, we get 750. Like, just depends on the business. So I think for the types of clients that I get here, I'm pretty on par and like in pushing things a healthy amount, not going crazy. Because I will get people that, that it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I just can't go a dime over where it is right now. And then I get other people that say, oh, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I need to raise my prices even more. But I still get plenty of phone calls um, where it's just somebody's looking for a price. I'm not gonna be your shop if you're just calling around looking for a price. But conveying that over the phone is not an easy thing to do. So that's why I, like, I really think I have to just change things. Um, maybe quote the entry and follow immediately up with a, uh, with a proposal. So that way you, you have like, you want to know how much it is. Okay, this is where it starts at or this is what I recommend. Let me send you over... Um, a pricing sheet, basically, or a quote. I need to get better at doing that. I have all the tools to do it. 
just running everything. Now I got some help, so that'll help out. <laughs> Oops. What's the scrub pad used for? Just another way to clean a window. Scrubby it, razor blade it. If there's not stuff sticking to it, scrubby is really good. Ooh, that looks nice. Okay, cool. That turned out super good. So this has a tighter rubber lip here, and the tricky part is trying to slide that film underneath it and not get any creases when you go to squeegee it out. I think nowadays people are more concerned with whether or not you do good work. Kind of just depends on the type of people. It depends on the type of people that you're attracting. When you're more expensive, you're, you're filtering out people that are very impulsive and looking for the, for the cheap job. There's still tons of people that are just looking for an inexpensive tint job. They just need a couple doors done. They don't really care, like, and that's fine. There's lots of things that I personally buy that I do not care. Like, I, I, I just need a working solution. Um, so there's always gonna be room for cheaper tint shops. Like, you know, I, I, I'm worried about today, whatever. This shop got me in, the car looks fine. I didn't pay a lot of money, I'm, I'm good to go. Whatever happens down the road happens down the road. I'll worry about it when I have to worry about it. Like, there's a ton of those people. I just don't like catering to that. But I've worked at a lot of shops that do. And you'll be very busy. Um, and you can have the exact same problems. Like, you know, they still expect good work. Um, not everybody, but you'll have that overly picky customer and just know that everybody wants a good job regardless of the price that you charge them. <laughs> so if you charge them 100 bucks and they complain, well, <laughs> you told them you'd get their car tinted nicely, not that they would have a bad job. So all that matters. A new, as a new tinter, how do you get a job at a tin shop? Um, keep your options open. Go in and ask to talk to the guy who runs the place and sound very eager and ambitious. And some people will be okay with teaching and some places want to find somebody that already knows how to do everything. So it's just trial and error. You, there's, there's no, like these aren't, you're not going into uh, a corporation. You're going into a lot of smaller mom and, mom and pop shops that are independently run. Some have really good programs put together. Some of them are just figuring out what they're doing. Some of them don't have much money to pay people. Um, so it, it's just, you've got a wide range of everything. You know, I'd, I'd say like the difference is a more corporate setup as a mechanic is, let's say you go and, uh, I don't know, get a, get a certification to work on, on Fords, and then you go get a job at a dealership, or then you go and get a job at an independent body shop. That's kind of like what you're dealing with there is independent. So there's no like necessarily real good structure to it. There can be, but there's, there's no like set path for it. So just go, sound ambitious, eager. Be like, hey, I'm looking for a job, Are you hiring? I mean, that's literally what the guy that, that's what Jack did. <laughs> he didn't even see the channel. He's just like, hey, I'm looking for a job. Um, I hate where I'm at right now. Would love to do something better with more potential. Um, you know, 
tinting and vinyl and all that seems cool. And then go from there. <laughs> if they say no, just show up anyways. <laughs> Honestly, it's not a bad strategy. You'd be surprised how many people you could say yes to that don't show up. <laughs> Trust me. I was just like, you know, the first thing is like, okay, is he going to show up? <laughs> he showed up? Oh, my God. That's amazing. Like today, he, he went on an entire week. He, he was working his other job, and we talked about it. We were like, okay, I would like for you to fully start next week. I know that's really soon. Um, but with the class and everything, might as well just get going. It's pretty short notice for, your, for where you're at. But if it's not a problem, I, I, you, can, you can get out of it next week. And he showed up today. Yep, I'm done with that place. Cool. Let's go. That, that's, a big, that's a big step. Do you charge more to use Pro Nano? How is it comparison in the price of ceramic? Like, can you ex can you explain a little bit more? Um, like, yeah, I charge more to do Pro Nano than I do other films. But that's because it's just more expensive. <laughs> they say no, just show up anyways. Dude, one of the best ways to get a job, this is, this is one of the most helpful things my dad ever taught me. Don't put your name in a stack of everybody else's. You're just, you, you got a hiring person, they got to go through a stack, you're going to sound like everybody else does. When you go in to get a job somewhere, ask to talk to a store manager or the person that's hiring. Like, just ask to talk to them and physically hand them something. It's the best piece of advice. Gets you a job super quick. Because on their end, they don't want to go through a stack of people and phone calls and schedule and, oh, this guy didn't pick up, and, oh, this guy can only come in this day, and blah, 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 blah. No, just go talk to the person in charge. Let them know you're very eager to start. Often they're just like, perfect, I need somebody to do this. You want to start Monday? Or you want to start soon? There we go. Make it really easy. So many people just don't care. Stand out. Are you going to forget that guy? Exactly. So, yeah, it was a super helpful thing that he told me early on. And it was never never a problem trying to find something pretty quickly. And also keep looking. If you're not happy where you're at, keep working where you're working and keep looking. Why do you shrink some windows and not some other windows? Okay, so on these quarters, you definitely can shrink them a little bit, but these are little itty bitty windows. Um, I often do shrink a lot of quarter windows, but I just didn't. <laughs> I t to be honest, I don't have a good reason for you. Um, I just know I can tint these without having to shrink them, so it just comes with, with experience. But there's plenty of times that I'll shrink something that people will tell me that doesn't need to be shrunk. I just, it's better to be it's better to be safe than not. Uh, does the market need tinters, in your opinion? Um, in the summertime, sure, because there's lots and lots of people looking for it, and there's not enough people to do all the work, so that's why people are scheduling things further out. In the wintertime, things slows down, so you probably don't need as many, but 
you know, you put time and effort into building a skill. Um, there's, for the foreseeable future, there's going to be a big demand still for window tint on buildings, on cars. So it's a great skill to learn. I don't think the market needs tinters. I think the market needs good tinters. <laughs> just like electricians. Doesn't need electricians, we need good ones. And just every other skill. Like there's so many skilled trades that are kind of underserved. Um, but what's, what's, what's kind of interesting about that for window tint is just we, don't, we generally don't think that far. It's we learn a skill and we figure out how to support it. And if there's anything I've learned just watching it over the years, that demand just isn't slowing. So it's like, does the market need, need Gucci? I don't know, but it exists. Does it need window tint? No, but it can definitely support it. It doesn't absolutely need it. You can figure out other things and other ways around it, but it's proven to just continue to support it. So in that, yeah. A tent in the summer, shovel snow in the winter, two skills that will never overlap work schedules. <laughs> snow has slowly been stopping here. Hello, tent studio, how can I help you? Sure, I wouldn't be able to get you in today, but I can schedule you out a little bit. Uh, the earliest that I have available is going to be uh, Monday the 27th. Uh, it depends on what you're looking to get tinted. Uh, what vehicle and what are you looking for? Okay, everything but the windshield on that would start at 290. Mm hmm. Yep, that would be in our color stable dyed film. We do carry carbon and ceramic films. The carbon's only a little bit more expensive at 350. Um, it's about a $60 bump in material, and the ceramic would be 450. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one. Yeah, it's people's days off. They are looking to get into somewhere now. They woke up today and they're like, oh shit, I got today off. Let's get some window tint. Getting a lot of phone calls today in comparison. Where's the new guy? Uh, he is um, dropping off rolls at Sun Distributing and picking up stuff for classes. So he is busy. All right, back window. Let's cut. Let's cut that out, which I didn't even need to move. Where's my film? Yep, holiday. So you can see if you were open on Sunday, <laughs> you'd be real busy. Find market gaps and fill them. Open up later in the day, like after 5 o'clock. So many tin shops close when other places close. You fill in those gaps, you can find some interesting ways to pull in a lot of extra business. Should kick this out a little bit.
perfect. Yay, it's not like a huge headache today. <laughs> I think we're finally getting it dialed in. Since this isn't a very big back window, we're just gonna pre-trim it and then we'll shrink it. You know, I kept this around because I thought I would use it on the other quarter windows and stuff and then I ended up plotting them out. So now it's kind of just sitting here in my way. Do you use all the same size rolls? No. But there's only a few sizes that you that you need. And it's all just to try and save a little bit of film. It's not going to make a huge difference um, in the short term. But in the long term, yes. So on most sedans, you can get away with like 18 inches tall. So take a 36 inch roll, split it in half. And you have 18. Um, you can also take that same 36 inch roll, throw it on the back window, and you have some room at the bottom for quarter windows. And in most cases. So you can do a lot of full cars with a 36 inch roll, but then you have ones that are a little bit taller, um, like trucks, SUVs. Um, some you need a 20 inch, some you need a 24 or you can flip that 36 inch sideways. So it, most of what I recommend is just get 36 and 24, and then if you have the extra budget, you can add some 20s in there. 36 is gonna be your first, um, but again, lots of truck windows, it's good to have 20 or 24 inch rolls. 24 will guarantee it covers F-150s, new, new GM stuff, um, but a 20 inch roll would be fine for like a Ram and other stuff too. So like on this one, I might have been able to split a 36 and a half, but these windows are actually kind of tall. So it'd make more sense to do like a 40, but I don't like doing 40s very often, so then I just used a 24 inch roll. But that isn't exactly saving a lot of film. 20 inch would have been a better option. 260s, 24, 36, 20, 24, 16. Yep, yeah, that's a good way to do it. So you can, you can have an inventory with like a lot of different sizes, or you can just keep it very simple. And you'll, you'll waste a little bit of film, but it makes reordering kind of easy. But you'll go through other rolls longer than other ones, 260s, 24, 36. 20, 24, and 16. <laughs> and then it's in, a, it's in a 60 inch box, right? God, I hate 60 inch boxes. <laughs> So a big part of it for me was um, being able to carry stuff around. So I'd go back and forth to my truck a bunch of times. So I just keep all the rolls pretty simple. Yeah, so what you're gonna find is the pre-made boxes and most common sizes are 40, 
36, uh, 24, and 20. And then you can still order, like film gets made in either 60 inch rolls or 72 inch rolls, depending on who you're ordering from and what line of film that you're ordering. So like Pro Classic moved over to a um, 72 inch platform. So you can do 36, you can do three 36s, or two, th excuse me, two 36s and three 24s off of that. Makes it really convenient uh, for the distributor. So like the, or you could take a 60 inch roll, split it 30, 30, you know, and find that suits a lot of vehicles too, as far as just back windows go. You don't need that extra film. But not a lot of suppliers are selling things that way. What's ply? Okay, so ply um, usually refer, so it, it, there's multiple layers to film and like the really cheap stuff typically is just like a one ply film. Um, and you'll see a two ply film almost double in price because there's twice as much material there. But most professional grade films, like the way we talk about them is usually in, in just thickness, not ply. I think ply came from a very cheap market. So they would just rattle off the specs and it would be like one ply or two ply, like toilet paper. And so I think that carried over from just online sellers listing that and then enough people asking about it that, that it really has to do with like the thickness of the film. And most films, most films are gonna be uh, one and a half mil. So there's one mil and one and a half mil or one ply or two ply. Not exactly, but that's kind of what that means. I've had some cheap films though. They'll say they'll say uh, one and a half mil, but <laughs> half of that thickness is actually the uh, the liner, not just the film. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to screw around with it. So when you're buying something online, the cheapest stuff that you're going to buy is just going to be a, um, a one-ply, one-mil film. It's going to be, it's going to feel like tissue paper. A, um, a two-ply slash one-and-a-half-mil film is going to feel a lot more rigid. So when you're practicing with something, it's nice to lean into a, um, a thicker film because that's what most, most companies are going to be selling anyway, so you might as well at least have that much. There's still a few brands that sell thin films. SolarGuard's one of those. They sell thin films. Why do you choose to use the film that you're using versus all the other other tints out there. Um, I've been tinning for quite a long time at this point, and I'd say there are no perfect companies to go with. There's just companies and films that you kind of gravitate towards and work best for, for your business. Um, I've had a lot of films fail. I've used some good ones. Um, a big reason why I went with Geo was they, for a long time, have been one of the first companies to try and take on new types of films, so carbon and ceramic. Um, they were one of the first companies to introduce it. 
and kind of pushed in that direction, but it was early. So later on, um, I, was, I was using Avery Dennison, and I was really happy with their NR, but I noticed that they didn't have a very good upgrade path from there. They didn't have a carbon film. Um, well, the carbon that they did have was mixed with dyed, so that makes it weaker. And it was a little hazy. So a big thing that I was looking to find a solution for was a good carbon film and a good ceramic film that didn't have hardly any haze to it. And when I picked up C2, that's when they had finally made a big jump. Right? Oh, yes. OK. So I've, I've worked and talked to the company before. So I know the people there. I know what they're about. I know where uh, it comes from, which is a big thing. And I kind of pay attention to, to trends. So they are, they're not an A tier as far as brand awareness and name goes, but they carry A tier film. So they're not big enough where I have to schedule a meeting to get in touch with, um, with the owner of the company. <laughs> and they take care of everybody that orders through them. Um, I, hear nothing, I hear nothing but good things about, about their shipping and their support. So that's also a huge thing. where it can be very easy to get caught up in like, hey, I've heard of this company. They're a big company. That means they're the best. Well, stuff gets lost <laughs> over time. And just because they're a big company doesn't mean that they're the best choice for your business. Um, they could be. But sometimes you need to be on scale with the company that you're ordering from, too, um, as far as like if you are a big shop and you have big orders to fill, you need a big company to have a ton of film and inventory that can supply with those orders. Um, or when you have a situation, they have the capital to back you up. Let's see. This was here the whole time. So there's definitely a handful of other companies um, that I could have gone with, but I already had a pretty good um, relationship with Geo before. And so when they pulled in their C2, I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna give them a shot. I'm gonna take the carbon, I'm gonna put it on a really picky person's vehicle, and we'll see how they like it. And then also how I like it too. And then their Pro Nano was already like a proven film. So the Pro Classic was a proven film. Pro Nano was a proven film. Carbon was a newer thing that slot in right in the middle. And they've brought in other films. And I still have the exact same lineup right now. I like these three films uh, the most right now. And that's what I offer. So. There's definitely lots of other good options out there. And to be honest, there's a lot of companies that you could go with that are not going to steer you wrong. But eventually, I had to pick somebody. So that's kind of how I settled on Geo. They were cool. They seem to appreciate. Um, where, where everything's kind of moving to, where like bigger corporations can move a lot slower. They have to make more decisions as a team rather than just on gut. OK. 
cannon. Look at that. Look at that falling over. God, I gotta fix this. I got a windshield to do too, so we're not done yet. This head this is a new headset too, and for whatever reason it keeps flopping over. I gotta figure out how to fix this. How long do you tell your customers not to roll the windows down for? Uh, in this weather, about three days. And I also let them know that they could literally accidentally roll it down immediately and everything's gonna be fine. And if it's not, I take care of it. So I'll tape the switches, leave a three day disclaimer, uh, write it on a little card for them. And uh, if they have any problems, let me know. Sorry, I gotta talk into a microphone. Best cheap tint for beginners. I want to practice on my Subaru. Tint Depot. Sun Distributing. Check out those sites. You'll probably find some good stuff. Tint Depot, I have some more, more budget-friendly films. I've noticed film prices just kind of going up in general, though. Getting harder to save money with good film. Or with cheap film, sorry. And good film. Everything's going up. Battery swapped. Cool. Let's put this one on the charger. Grab four windshield. Any quick tips for the windshield? No. No, I wish I did. Um, did I just do a Rav four? No, they're pretty in line with most vehicles. If you can take off the, uh, if you can take off the mirror, that'll help you out. That'll free up some space. But it should be pretty straightforward with most windshields. What's crazy is the link that showed up in chat right before I heard you say them. I've got some uh, some neat tricks. Shink. Stuff like that. Because otherwise, I'd have to keep typing in links over and over and over. I put them on hot, hot uh, speeches so I can just speak them. I speak in links now. What about hot weather? Yeah, that is hot weather. <laughs> um, so yeah, cold weather, I'll tell them to leave windows up for about a week, um, like four or five days. It can take up to a week to dry. Sometimes there might be a stubborn water pocket that just hangs around a little bit longer. But if there's anything that bugs you after a week, let me know. Most everything's gone. Or should be gone. On this one, with the weather that we have right now, if I'd be surprised if it's not all taken care of um, in a day or two. But yeah, should be pretty quick. But especially with you're down south, you do a car, you pull it outside, by the time the customer comes to pick it up, <laughs> could be completely dried out. Don't even worry about it. Roll them down right away. Um, rolling down the windows early is kind of like a big myth anyways. It's helpful, you know, especially if your film doesn't have a great glue on it, it's helpful. Um, to leave the windows up for a couple of days and just let it cure. Because um, the only thing that might happen is along that bottom edge. The bottom edge might catch a seal, and because it's not locked down to the glass super hard, it might peel.
might. But if you install everything right, oops, that's gonna hit that. Okay. But if you're gonna if you install everything right, then you're fine. So I still give that disclaimer just because that's the way it's been since day one. And yeah, it doesn't hurt to leave them up for a little bit. And at this point, it's a little harder to, <laughs> it's almost a little harder to explain that, no, you can, you can roll them down right away and you'll be totally fine. It's just people have come to expect it. Yeah, leave them, leave them up for a couple of days. That always helps with the curing process, but you're not going to hurt them by rolling them down. If it did, it's all covered. How much do you charge for carbon? Carbon IR film. So carbon on this one is 550 for everything with the windshield. Kind of just depends on how much work we're doing. Front doors are 150. Uh, without a windshield is uh, 350. 350 going on. Uh, as things start to inflate even more, probably be pushing up near 400. But that's not that's not going to be for a little bit. Carbon on the sides and back with ceramic on the windshield. Yeah, I've done it a couple times. It gets a little more muddy um, when you're trying to figure out pricing. Because often the way it gets split up is two front doors, full car, full car with windshield. Those are like the main, the main three ways that something gets split up. So then when somebody asks about just a windshield, um, my pricing starts at 150, 200, then 250. So when you're 650 for ceramic with a windshield, and then you're 550 for carbon, then all of a sudden you're like, wait, so how much is a ceramic windshield in there? And, and so it, like, then it starts to get a little bit more muddy. And people are just like, oh, OK, I might as well just jump up and get ceramic all the way around. Because it's not much of a difference at that point. The carbon IR looks foggy on Windows, has an angle glare that goes away. Uh, so OK, uh, depends on the carbon film that you're installing. There's cheap carbon and there's good carbon. Um, this stuff, it doesn't have a haze ever. As soon as you put it on the glass, it doesn't dry with a haze. Uh, there's just water that needs to dry out, but it's not haze. There's, <laughs> there was this big thing for a while where haziness was a part of the curing process. It's not as much anymore. It might be, like, so when I was installing Lumar, when I was installing ASWF, there would be an initial haze for about an hour or two. The windows would look fine. Uh, like, you're installing a window. The top would look hazy. Then the rest of it would look not quite as hazy. You made it back. Did you get everything? Sweet. All right. Um, so you got all the, the tool sets in your car, right? So we will, if you want, I'll, well, I'll open up that door. You can just back it in and then we'll unload everything. Sure. That'll be easiest. Probably clear off a table and start getting things set up. I'm probably going to have to tell them not to not to do the kegs in the cases anymore. Oh God, this is just a mess. That is, that's Jack. He 
He dropped off rolls. He got me tools. And we should have seven sets for the class. So I'm gonna pile everything up on this table and then I'm gonna to have to immediately unpile everything up off of this table. But most everything should be set up on here. All right. Cool. Dang! We got some kegs. Okay. So, a keg is included with the class. It is. These are the kegs. Okay. So, we'll set, I want you to set these things up first. Inside, I should probably tell them to stop doing this, but in, whoa, they double box them now? Dang. That's super fancy. But I like how they box them up, so it's really nice. Malibus are easy to tint. Okay, so these are the kegs, and in each one of the kegs will be a hose. So you open them by pulling that up, turning it, um, and then sliding that out. Ooh, look at that. They even put the uh, um, they even put the measuring cups in there too. Sweet. So they roll all these up in here. What I want you to do is open them all up and just reel them up and then undo this and just uh, cinch it on there. So, so that way all the sprayers are ready to go um, ahead of the class. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay. And then just put them uh, one by one on the tables and just line up all six or seven, as many as you can, just get them all on the table. And then we'll go through all the tools. Damn, might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, and the price of that is <laughs> the price of those kits for me have gone up. Uh, okay, so what were we talking about? We were talking about carbon. Yeah, so carbon film. Um, there's good carbon film and there's cheap carbon film. So it'll range in price and uh, you can find lots of, lots of cheap carbon film out there. It'll look fine on a car and then when you pull it out into the sunlight, even after it's completely dried out, it'll look hazy. That's because those, the little carbon particles that are put in the film um, are a little bit bigger. So the finer you make those particles, which is more of an expensive process, the clearer your film is gonna be. Oh yeah, we need 50. So, dyed, or just films in general, like I used to install films that would haze up for a couple of hours. Once they get wet, the glue would, would haze up a little bit, and then uh, within a couple of hours it would completely clear up. It was like, a, it's an old thing. Most glues that I've run into, they don't do that anymore. So if your film doesn't look hazy uh, inside of a garage, but then you pull it out into the sunlight and it looks hazy, um, and you have carbon or ceramic, it's, uh, it's not a very good one. Film should be clear. Where's the placement on the tape? The tape uh, is right on the outside edge. So I always like to create a little border. I like to keep a little border um, on, uh, on the glass. So the edge, the inside edge of the tape is on the outside edge of that dot border right there. You can see it maybe. I just do that all the way around. And then I'll cut in the center Kind of just depends on like how much room um, I want to create on the inside. A little uh, eighth inch border gives me some wiggle room. So if my knife slips and I'm a little inside or my film starts to tack up and I'm just like a little bit away from that edge, like I, it's, you can move it, you can move it around a little bit. But if you go too far past that, 
it depends on the window that you're installing it on. So always check. So on the inside of here, you can see I have a little bit of, I have a probably like a maybe a quarter inch border here around here and it's much bigger in these lower corners than this bottom edge. So I just need to cover up to the end of the dots. That's all I'm concerned about. Yeah, so I'm going to try and grab some footage of the uh, of the class. I never so I'd never have any great plans for this, but I got a new toy. And this guy here. So, I'm going to get a looking at a different one. But anyways, for tomorrow, this will work out. And then unfortunately, we'll have to figure out something for Tuesday. So yeah, I'm gonna have him hold a camera for part of the class and he's gonna film some stuff. So it should be cool. That's something I'm not able to do. Cause I, my attention is all tied up in helping everybody. So that's why a lot of stuff doesn't get pictures, video. I only have the pictures that I took of the class. I have a little bit of video, but very little. Very, very little. So yeah, working on all that extra stuff. So we gotta pay Jack, and my rent just went up. We got other stuff, everything's more expensive. Fun, fun. So what I, what I also should be able to do is just film some good regular videos, um, maybe during some downtime. And if there's not much downtime, then having an extra set of hands to help film while I'm doing stuff, um, which is something I can't really do because it takes too much time I'm trying to set up shots. That's why live streaming is so convenient. How much for all windshield, except the windshield in 5%. <laughs> it's like a Grand Cherokee. Okay, uh, that would be 290 for all the sides in the rear. Unless you want carbon or ceramic. But yeah, 5% starts at 290. Why are they charging me 320? I don't know. Some places are more expensive, some places are cheaper. <laughs> there isn't one set price everywhere in this country. It's like going to one mechanic versus another one. They're all going to quote you a different price. Same thing with window film. Some places are cheaper, some are more expensive, some areas are cheaper based on shops, how many exist, their rents higher. <laughs> exactly. Income levels are better, like who knows. There's a lot of things that play into it. Don't be concerned on saving 30 bucks. Be more concerned on getting a good job. That'll be a headache and a half. My work is gonna be different from somebody else's. But yeah, I should charge more. <laughs> They may have higher taxes as well. 
They usually don't think ahead that much, though. Most places don't. Most places are just, I don't know, that's where they charge. They toss a number out there, and that's kind of where, like, the market settled on. What material do you use? What do you want? So that is in a color stable dyed film. Maybe they're installing a carbon and I'm more expensive, I don't know. 290 for dyed, 350 for carbon, 450 for ceramic. But again, it just depends on the grade that you're going with. They are not all the same. I want the see-through from the inside, but dark from the outside. <laughs> oh, that's the best. You've been, you've been duped. That was a great TikTok meme. So every uh, every 5% film is going to be like that. They're going to be the same shade from the inside versus the out. Their trick is your camera. <laughs> Said everyone ever. <laughs> you know, that's a funny thing, too. Is like I want it clear on the inside, dark on the outside. Um, but there's just as many people that go, I want it dark but legal. And that's like, that sounds opposite to me. It's like, I want it to be very private and shady. But I also don't want cops to pull me over for it. So I want it to be clear when they see it. any experience with photochromatic tint yep yep it's not there yet there's some small there's some it's either hyper expensive and doesn't change very much um, but it works or there's cheaper stuff and it doesn't last It's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, leap, though. I found this crazy stuff on, uh, on eBay. It was 70. Canon. Whoa, really? No electricity at home. <laughs> That's like saying I want a big, uh, big, good looking lifted truck, but one that gets good gas mileage. <laughs> what tape are you using on the windshield? Glass Aid. Ooh, hang on. I got to help somebody out. You can't get out? It's all right, it's on the other camera. Um, so there is a pull string at the top. If you pull down on it, it'll unlock the garage and you can lift the whole thing up. Oh, okay. So it's a really easy way to, uh, to get out of the garage. And then afterwards, if you wanna close it back up, um, and then we got a house key to get back in, so we're fine. Oh, yeah, I just I think the one up and the, the power shut And the power went out? Yeah, it's probably gonna get, it might get warm there, but yeah, if you wanna swing over here, well, I still got power here, so. Alrighty. Love you. You too, bud. <laughs> He's got a little smile on his face. 
All right. I'll maybe see you soon then. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, bye. When you're cleaning the window, are you using baby shampoo and a scrub pad? Yeah, and sometimes I'll razor it too. I'll do it on this one so we can go over that. So on this guy, uh, we, we need a towel too, actually. Let me, let me grab one. Sweet, looks good. I, I, they'll get better. <laughs> um, like that, that's the first one. By the sixth one, it'll be better than it. go back and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it gets a little funny to roll that whole thing up, right? Yeah. yeah. I figured you could figure it out, though. Um, thanks for everything you've taught me. I always learn something when I watch. You're welcome. Glad to hear it. OK. So we're going to put, put this guy in here. There's half. I'm getting better at that. said before ruining this side oh no there we go if you get that top to flip up a little bit and you sneak that push stick in there it's a good way to get most of this in here without getting in your way too much having a little push stick to get all that in this is something that i've had like added to my they might be out of stock right now though I've had in my store that I didn't use, but I saw a lot of tinners use them. They use little push sticks and panel sticks, so they were an easy thing for me to pick up. But you can find them all over the place. Especially like trim removal kits. Those are really easy to find. Those you don't need anything crazy for. They're just like soft plastic things that help pry paneling back without damaging it. Do you recommend do you recommend the class of I'm pretty decent on consistent installs or mainly for beginners? Um yes and no. Depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> I always think that pulling the trigger and jumping on it, you're, you're gonna get value out of it. I mean that goes with with anybody, um, like I, whenever there's another tinter in a shop, I always just watch what they do. Like it's, it's always just interesting to see how somebody take, handles something different. So being that you can already see how I install most things, a lot of that's not gonna be new. What is gonna be different though is being able to actually see it in person um, but if you've got like a lot of questions about the business side of things or, you know, just being around somebody that thinks a little bit differently, like there's so much that comes up out of the conversations that I have with people that always makes it, um, like that was a that was a big part of some of these previous classes too. It's like just being able to ask a lot of questions on like 
How do you structure your films? How do you get business? How did you get to where you're at? How did you do this? What do you do for social media? What do you do for this? You know, there's so many little things that you can ask. So take full advantage of it here. But it's definitely not just for beginners. But when you've been tinning for a little bit of time, I think that's the sweet spot for like, it's mainly here as a hands-on class. And it would be even more helpful if the live streams really didn't exist. But you can definitely learn anything and everything there is to know off of listening to the, and watching the live streams and, you know, those extra questions, I try and always get to them. How long does a MacTac last? It gets better with time. So, forever. The longer you use it, I think the better it gets. It'll just get really dirty. There are a lot of companies who use social media to promote their business. Yeah, that's how everybody needs to do it. You're kind of just missing out if you're not. But it's not as simple as it used to be. It's not just post pictures of what you're doing and expect business to come to you. That's not how it works anymore. Too many people are doing the same thing. You have to figure out ways to constantly push, um, push the envelope. Oh yeah, I need this too. But yeah, you need ways to, to keep pushing things and look for, look for little gaps there. But the longer you're in business, the more business that you're gonna attract anyways. So it's not always gonna be, like it's, you know, people are like, oh, I should, I've been so busy, I need to keep up on my social media, right? It's kind of a natural evolution to all of it. It's always important to keep up on in some way, shape or form but it's especially important near the beginning when you're just trying to be found. What's been the most effective for your business? Uh, being good to the people that come in here. YouTube has, uh, has given me some extra clients but just trying to stay on top of the ones that come in here, letting them know everything's as taken care of as it can possibly be, answer any questions and... <laughs> Jack, I forgot to mention we have fog machines. <laughs> there I'm waiting for waiting for that alert did it come in or is it lagging way behind because I didn't hear it but I know it's Daniel a couple times on the windshield this mirror do dad wipe down. I think I missed it. Lagging way behind. What the heck? Okay, well we'll just, it'll probably pop up. Daniel Reyna with the 10. Kuya Matt, I did a 22 Lexus 350. Oh my God, pull the sweep to remove the panel. There it is. Yes. 100%. Daniel Rayner super chatted $9.99. Kuya Matt, I did a 2022 Lexus 350. Um, yep. Pull the sweeps or remove panel. Yep, 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 yep. That is one of the few cars that I wholeheartedly agree with on that. So if you... Sounds like you figured it out. On the IS, on, on the new IS slash ES... 350s, 250s, 550s. Um, those are the ones that I've had. 
you can actually pop the top of the seal back. A little push pin here comes out and then that trim, like that rubber part pulls off and the whole thing comes out. It's really, really easy to do, thankfully. And without it, they are a pain to tint. The older ones, um, from what I understand, you need to take the whole door panel off. You can pull the seal, but then you have to take the whole door panel off uh, to put it back on. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I figured, or I, there, I think there was a post that showed me that, or I just tried. I don't remember. But yeah, thankfully I knew that one. Thank you so much for the 10. I want drips. Here's a towel, give me a towel. I'll minimize drips here. This back down. Oh yeah, we were talking about social medias. Yeah, so to the two things that really helped get any clients, um, having a YouTube channel for sure brings in some business, but I'm sure there's people that think like, hey, he's got a big following as soon as he made it known that he's got a shop. He's just scheduled out for months. <laughs> ah, no. That's not how it works, unfortunately. But the more I do these streams, the more videos I put out, people that are looking into tinting, um, and you know, clients that are interested in and how it's done, they'll come across it and be like, oh, I didn't know he was in my area, that's awesome. I'm gonna go there instead of trying to find somewhere else to go because yeah, it makes sense. The other thing that helped out a ton is just uh, being found on like maps. And then the extra things that slowly get picked up in search over time um, are gonna be like your website, which goes hand in hand with your maps location. So definitely like as soon as you are like, hey, I'm a tent shop, get a maps listing. And then also at the same time, get a website made. I don't care if you put a hacky personal one together, just get something and then work on making it look better. Those will just start to get you inquiries. And then from there, you just answer phone calls, try and schedule people. I do encourage taking deposits in the beginning too, um, because you're gonna get a lot of people that say yes, and then they don't show up. So a couple of years back, I was not, like I was trying that out for myself. After seeing it for this long, yeah. <laughs> when you're new, just take deposits, man. Too many people wanna waste your time. Because you're gonna get phone calls from people that have already called five. You gotta understand, like, when you're newly listed, like, there's already people that you're trying to take business from. And the only people that are calling you are either friends and family. Um, if you have a really unique setup, somebody that came across it early and is like, hey, this looks really cool. 
Um, but you're going to get a lot of people that are just price shopping. They're, that have called three or other shop, three or four other shops, haven't got in yet. So you're just one of many. And you got to figure out, how do I compete with that? That's where you got to start thinking out of the box. Not just lower, not, not, not lower your price. Just start thinking out of the box. In some areas, you know, I've had people that are like, hey, I have a detailing business. I get, have a lot of clients already. Uh, they're asking about window tent. So, you know, it's a, it's a quick thing to then start getting clients. But I've seen, I, I've experienced the opposite for me. Like I haven't had a tent business and then opened my tent business. I was staying for other shops and I hardly had any inquiries in the beginning. You just stay patient. And the people that come to you is an opportunity. Every single person that comes to you is another opportunity to go beyond that. So impress the people that come in and then they'll talk about you. And then that'll spread. There we go. Pretty well lined up here. Go ahead and start getting this out. See, this is why I have a border. So I can shift this around. And if I'm shy on any of my edges, I just shift it back over in the other way. And and then start squeegeeing everything out. Good. Nice. I think it's going to be a hundred degrees this week. It's going to be the hottest it's going to be all week for the class. Yay. <laughs> As your little boy, is he giving you a run for the money? Yes. <laughs> He's doing real good. He likes running around, slowly getting into things. <laughs> Being a little kid, it's pretty great. There's some nights he drives us crazy, but then he always makes you smile too. Does the shop have AC? I've got it up front, so when you leave the door closed, um, it helps. It's still gonna get a little, still gonna get a little warm, but I don't have it back here. So if it's cooler outside, I leave the door open. I'll probably shut it. Whoa, what the heck? Cannon.
Really? Oh, was this not charged? Ooh, that's scary. I thought I had this one charged. Okay, I'm gonna throw the other one back in here. Then I'll finish up. Yeah, the... Let's see. Think about giving away a free TV every month to drum up business quick. Every tint job is a chance to win. That's an interesting way to try and do it. Um, one of the shops, one of the shops I tinted for, they had like a drawing thing, where it's like you can, every tint job you can win a potential discount or slash win a free tint job. Um, but they also had little envelopes that they would give to people um, for like returning customers and referrals, discounts and stuff like that just to try and spread word of mouth a little bit faster. Because I know it can be a grind in the beginning. I mean, even for me, like, <laughs> I would, like, you see some people, it's like, oh, I quit. They, they quit the shop that they're working at, and they're immediately, they're immediately busy, and you're like, what did you do? And they just were in touch with the right crowd, or they were filling in a major gap or something. God, can we... Do that, there we go. Offer money, offer money for referrals for both parties. Yeah, stuff like that, like returning car, you get a discount and you refer a friend and they get a discount too. I have a couple of different opinions on that. I don't think it's wrong. Um, I don't like to do anything that encourages discounts personally or trying to give a discount um, for somebody like, you know, to, to try and drum up business because I ended up doing that when I first got in business and like I underpriced myself a little bit. Um, and some of those people, they brought me a few cars. So like every time and the people that they referred, they referred them at that price. And it was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Start digging yourself into a little bit of a hole. So you have to adjust, you just have to adjust for that as you start building up clients. But I, I know in the very beginning, it can be, it can be kind of scary if you're, you know, things are slow. And you're just like, okay, I'm here, people. Let's do some work. And then your phones are dead. I think it's a good opportunity also to look at everything that you've done and know that it can be improved. So from your website, from uh, things that you're doing online, there's always opportunity in slow times to do more of the things that really start to pull in general business. So for me, when things are slow, I'm like, on the one hand, I'm like, Oh shit, I gotta fill up my schedule. And then at the other thing, then I finally, then I fill up my schedule and then I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have time to do a video. I think everybody, you like, and I say everybody, I know everybody will not do this, but you need to figure out how to make what you do interesting for people around you. And then maybe promote that stuff or just have it so it can be found for the people that are looking at for it in your area. Whether that be, 
you know, making a video on your local state laws to start, just things that would get searched. If you are the person in your area that people go to learn about that stuff and not me, then you will get the business because I can't be everywhere. It's all about how are you getting found first and where are they finding you? And I can tell you, the people that find me on Google Maps, they can be very different from the people that find me off of my YouTube channel. They can be very different from the people where I get leads off of my website. So maybe you give a kickback for referrals. Yeah, and I, I that's a it's a good way to try and stir up some extra business. The the part that I have a little bit of an issue with is if you had somebody that came to you and you did everything right and they're super happy with the business, did you have to give them a discount to then refer friends and family? So instead of maybe giving them a discount, Maybe give them something that they can then share with friends and family as far as like, oh, I got this car tinted here and they shot a TikTok of my car. Look at it. Like there's creative ways to get recommended. Ah, oh, it's right there. There's just one little hair here. It's stubborn. I'm gonna get ya. I'm gonna get ya. You know what I mean? Or at the very least, to get them to want to leave a review. You know, there's just... That's why, like, just think hard about all of it and try and identify some things that you can do and really flex your creative self to come up with some of that stuff or take my recommendation off of that one. So here's the thing. A big reason the live streams can, can be helpful is anytime I tell a client that their car is going to be streamed live on the channel, there's probably going to be a little bit of interest for them to watch it. And they also can share it with friends and family while it's happening or after the fact. You know what I mean? So it's not like a huge percentage of my business, but it is another avenue where I might get in front of people that are interested in it. You just, you gotta be creative. You gotta think outside the box. Especially when things are slow. Oh yeah, why'd I put that heat gun down? Let's touch up, let's touch up the sides. Things are going pretty good. We're coming to the end here. We're just gonna wipe that down. And we'll clean everything up. Everything's tinted though at this point. So one of my, I don't know, one of my upcoming clients, he saw a video of me tinning a Model Y and he, so he called me and he was like, hey, so I saw a video of you doing this Model Y. And I was like, oh, cool. He's like, can you do mine? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Let's set it up. What if I didn't have a video on it? I wouldn't have got that business. But that's speaking a lot from like the YouTube businessy side. And I know it's easy to look at a channel like mine and go like, well, yours is different. You've been doing this for a long time.
But don't just look at it like that. You gotta start somewhere. And TikTok has created one hell of an opportunity for people that really see it. TikTok, YouTube. Shit, even Facebook and Instagram, there's still opportunities there. They're just generally harder. Most people are going to tell people if they get excellent work done. Yes. So that's why I feel a little bit iffy on like referral discounts and stuff like that. Um, but again, I, I like it's not something I've actually done. But giving somebody a reason to then hand information about your shop over to somebody else you might get a more, you might get a faster response that way. Like, hey, he's got a, if you're interested in doing yours, he gave me this promotional card, it's good through blah, 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 blah. You know, for like three, four months or whatever. So then that gets somebody to act a little faster on it rather than put it in a drawer and let it sit and call you a year later? I, like, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's reasons companies do lots of promotions and discounts, so. But there's also lots of bad business too, so I don't know. Dang. Look at those kegs. Nice. <laughs> That'll be fun. All right. Get this thing all buttoned up. It's looking good. I've done so many, I've done so many cars with full windshields on stream. I remember when I used to just do full cars with no windshields. Remember that? You guys remember that? I really enjoy when I can do a live stream that doesn't involve a full windshield. <laughs> I'm very happy to add a full windshield on, but man. <laughs> There's been so many that it's like full with windshield, full with windshield, full with windshield. <laughs> so there you go. We're five all the way around. It is super dark on the back and the sides. And then 50 on the windshield. So when you get this pulled out, it'll definitely brighten up the front. Just, whew. <laughs> nice, I like it. Cannon. As this thing is now falling off my head. There are sandwich shops that give a free sandwich after you buy five sandwiches. <laughs> yes, there are. Sandwich, like something like that's gonna be a little bit different from window tint. Um, mostly because it's something that you would rebuy frequently, so they wanna encourage you to come back as a habit and then you get rewarded on your fifth one. Same thing with like coffees and stuff like that. It's good for those small food purchases and whatnot like and sorry, got a little jumbled. Um, it's good for those types of uh, 
those types of businesses. Window tinting is going to be a little bit different, but yeah, they definitely do. Get that little punch card, and then and then you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm only one away. I guess I have to do it. So then they sell you that extra sandwich. For beginner, beginner tinted, what do we say to potential customers turn around on the job? Just drop it off for the day. If, if you're not sure how long it's going to take you, give yourself all the time that you need. And, um, you know, some people can't do that, but there's a lot of people, they, there's shops that do that. Hey, just drop it off in the morning. We'll call you when it's done. So you don't have to tell them that you're new. You're going to make sure that you do that job right. Get them to drop off the car. Um, if they ask how long it's going to take, you just say you're going to need it for the day, and, and if they want to wait on it, you can't give them a super exact timeline. <laughs> you're going to put not get every person that way, but you know, you're going to make sure that the work is done right. Can you show the tools you use for all the windows? Sure. So main squeegee, I use a fusion handle and the hybrid. Uh, to tuck the film, I use the shank. Uh, for um, squeegeeing out the sides and the bottom, I use the Tri-Edge. Tri-Edge. That's the Detroit Tint Studio one. For shrinking on the back, I use a heat gun with felt card. Um, to cut the film, I use a stainless steel knife and a red dot knife. And then the little quarter windows, I have a small black turbo right now. And that's basically everything that I used on this car. <laughs> I somehow have five. Oh my God, hang on. I think I've been picking them up off of my toolbox, putting them in my tool belt, and then look at this is how many triages I've literally had in my belt. And they just kind of sneak in there all nice, and then I grab another one. We're going to have to sort out the tool belt. That is a lot of them. I don't need that money. I just used one. I'm a beginner, but I think I would be able to say four hours. I could do it faster, but I think I would give myself a cushion. It's always good to give yourself a little bit more time, and if you finish early, then they're happy because you finished it early. But you uh, under-promise, over-deliver. That's what people say. Don't tell them two hours and then take four hours. Take... Uh, Tell them four hours and then take two hours. Did you get August class scheduled yet? Uh, no. I'm expecting it to be the third or fourth week in August. I just don't have official dates yet. July has kind of, no, not July. Wait, yeah, June? July has kind of been lagging behind a little bit. Um, but I should put it up there. Maybe people are more on vacation. I don't know. Um, is it okay to use the same tools install that you clean with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do it. Um, so I flush all the seals and clean with this, and then I'll, I'll wipe them off, and then I'll install the, the, the film with that. The big question is, like, you just don't want hard specs to, like, stick on your squeegee or something like that, so I'll always wipe them off. But I do that when I'm using them all the time anyways. So if you really pay attention to what I'm doing, I'll squeegee a few times, and then I'll, like, wipe the blade off because I just don't want to grab a little piece of dirt and then scrape it against my film. So I just, I get used to doing that all the time and that's, I would still be wiping off my squeegee um, even if I only used it for installation because you're always going to pick up little bits of dirt. People are always happy when it's faster than you said. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm trying to decide if I'm coming in August or September. Ah, well we'll have August dates way sooner than September, um, but I, I'm ex it'll it'll be one of those. It'll either be this third or fourth week. I just don't know exactly. 
Hi. Dang, there's a whole bunch of people here now. <gasps> Lukey! What's up? It's a car. Yeah, I'm gonna shut the door. Hi. You're back in the shop. <laughs> Gonna run around. He's funny. Oh. You gonna come over here or no? There he is. What's up? Huh? Ooh, yeah. Hey, bud. Is there anything you want to tell the people? Is there anything you want to tell the people? Or do you want to spin something? He always likes spinning things. And if I don't have anything to spin, he's like, okay, I want to run around now. Your baby Matt has appeared. Yes, this is baby Matt. Pre-cut or cutting it yourself? I prefer cutting it myself. Hmm. Say hi. <laughs> There's people out there. Or are you just looking at yourself? What was that? <laughs> you gonna spin that? Okay, we can't pull that off though. That'll definitely pull off the whole shelf. Ooh, he'll spin the volume, though. Look, that spins. Where's the best place to start if you don't have a garage? Um, that's a good question. Find anywhere that you can start. Because you really need... It's really helpful to have space to pull in a car. So even if you have to rent like a storage unit that you can pull in a car, it's really good to have an enclosed space. And then... Uh, oh God, he's gonna push a whole bunch of buttons now. All right. <laughs> he's funny. Yeah, it's always hard to figure out how to start. Um, if you don't really have anywhere to start. Um, but taking your own car, getting an enclosed space to at least pull it in, practice a lot on that car, and then building up that business, um, shit, partner up with other shops. Um, that's not even tint shops necessarily, that's other automotive services. You could try and find a job at a tint shop, especially now when people are busy. Um, those are a couple of options, but it's definitely hard to just get your feet off the ground. He's in curiosity mode. I know. And he loves steering wheels. It's so fun. He loves things that spin, um, especially car steering wheels. So if you put him in the front seat of the car, he's going to sit there and do that and push all the buttons and stuff. He's really funny. What about outside tinning, like maybe an enclosed tent? So real outside tinning with a tent is difficult. It's not that you can't make it work, um, but you can have wind that blows the tent around, so you gotta keep it like anchored down. Um, and then temperature can be a big problem too. So if you're in a warmer state, you have it a little bit easier, but in the winter time here in Michigan, um, I worked with somebody that, that had a, um, that would go around with a tent. I actually Rick did. And uh, there were days that it was too windy. And then in the, in the winter time, he would have a propane torpedo heater in there and warm the whole thing up. And it wasn't super fun, but you can make it work. You eventually get tired of it, but in the beginning when you don't have many options and you're really determined, you can make a lot of things work. It costs about $600 and have anchors for the poles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like in a, in a parking lot, you're going to need like hefty weights on the bottom of it or unless you can anchor it right into the ground. So it just kind of depends on where you're set up. 
but just something to think about. I love you, Matt. Thanks for all the tutorials. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I always encourage trying to get into a place. Um, you know, tinning for other shops uh, is definitely a good solution, especially if you um, are new. Uh, well, you, like you got your feet wet with tint, you're tinning some stuff. You can find a lot of places that are just looking for a tinner, um, and that's a way to get into a place, pull in some extra money, um, and, and really get a lot of experience. But you are the guy uh, that has all the answers. So if you don't have answers, then uh, <laughs> it can get a little, little tough. But yeah, that was, that was how I did mobile. I didn't have a, my own shop for a long time. So started at my dad's place and then um, eventually went out, signed up with a mobile company and then went independent. So I at least got my foot in the door, you know, at my dad's place. But th so that gave me like a huge start for it, but I don't think I would have started any other way. I didn't have any interest in window tinting when I first, it was just like another job opportunity. Um, but I've really grown to like it and appreciate it. Um, let's see, what was the stream elements? There we go. What can you expect to make if you go around to places tinting? Uh, depends on what they can sell a job for. So a tint shop will either pay you hourly or commission. Um, Automotive service places like a glass shop, car audio places, um, they already have an existing client base. They may have some rough pricing on window tinning. Um, so you might have some that are like $400 all day long and no problem and it'll line up cars for you. Some places struggle to pull in clients at 200 bucks. Um, and then you'll make, a, you'll make a percentage off of that. So if I was going to be a full service for another company, um, I would charge 75%, 70 to 75%, and uh, that's what we were doing, 75%. We started at 60 and then upped it to 75% of the, uh, of the ticket. So they line up the clients, they give you some space, you bring all the film tools, you knock out the work, and then they make a cut off of it. All right, I'm going to shout out some Super Chats. Uh, so big thank you to Daniel Reyna, Swole Gang, Anywhere Audio, and Sean. Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. So basically, you provided everything except the shop and clients, and you made 75%. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you can give, see, you give them opportunity to make some more money, too. So that was generally like, you know, if they sell better work. So like if they sell carbon and ceramic, um, then they make more on a ticket. Um, but you need to set minimums on, on jobs. And sometimes the way that it was structured was that was 75% of what they were charging. And then you would continue to bill them a flat rate per car and then they would try and charge more on top of that. So then they were trying to, you know, push the tickets and make a little bit more money. Because 25% for a shop is not, is not very much. They need to start moving volume to make that really interesting. But that's what we were realistically doing because they couldn't find anybody. They just, they have people asking about tint. They had a tint program. You know, we were providing an all, uh, a one-stop solution. You call us, we come out, we knock it out and you don't have to worry about the film tools and we cover all the warranties. So that doesn't mean every shop's gonna be on board with a program like that right away and you'll find good ones and bad ones, but it kind of gives you a nice baseline to like shoot for. Like you can, you can go in with a lot of confidence and you can say, yeah, bring in tint. We'll expect about this many cars in a day. Um, <laughs> and then leave. Sorry. Um, what if they? What if you aren't okay with the prices they are charging? Did you tell them what they needed to be charging? Mm-hmm. Yep. That happened a lot. So, for example, like we would have, um, we were doing uh, at the time sixty percent, 
and that was off of, they would generally sell it at 220 for all the size in the rear. And initially, they were just selling tint jobs. And this was a bunch of different places. Most places were just selling a tint job at 220, and then we would make 60% of that. Um, there were lots of times that certain shops would just, oh, you know, I'm just trying to hook a buddy up. And then they would, you know, that affects your bottom line. So they would, you know, give them 20, 40 bucks off, undercharge the job. They did that all the time. That drove us crazy. That's why we eventually went with a flat rate. Um, and then if they discounted it, that came out of their pocket, not mine. But that didn't happen until much later on. So it was a growing process to learn for sure. Um, but yeah, if you don't like the prices that they're charging, find somebody else. You can yell, you can scream, um, you can have conversations with them. Sometimes it's a one-off thing, sometimes it's for a friend. There's a little bit of give and take there. If it's too much, just find somewhere else. There's lots of companies that are looking for tinters. That glass shop that we were charging 75% to, guess what? They just called me. They're looking for a tinner. They're symbol auto glass out in Sterling Heights. They're looking for a tinner right now. They have a great program. They charge good prices. They cannot find somebody. I had a shop that was okay with paying me 40% to come out and do their work, but they wanted to charge 200 a car, which is not very good. Yeah, so then you tell them to charge more or you get a bigger percentage. And if it doesn't work, like, it doesn't work. There are a lot of shops that you'll just go through. So they sound, um, they sound interesting and it's worth it to give some shops a chance. Aw, there's too many things for me to trip on right now. Um, so it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, like there's lots of interesting opportunities out there, but some just, there's plenty of bad shops that just aren't worth your time. And you just got to go through a few of those, give some people some chances and figure out what ones are worth keeping and what ones aren't. Because there is a reason. There's usually a, a reason that they don't have a tenor when you're going to them. <laughs> but so um, I'm going to wrap up here. But one quick thing before I before I go. Um, there's a lot of shops that are kind of in this in-between state. So when I, when I tinted for some of these companies, they weren't keeping me busy six days a week. They were keeping me busy two, may, one, two, maybe three, typically two days a week. So you got to keep your options open. You got to find a couple spots um, because these shops are not going to pull in $200,000 worth of tent in a year, $300,000 worth of tent. They're like sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 worth of tent work every year. Um, and they have potential to grow past that, but their main business is something else. So they're happy making their money, and then they would like to expand into another service that they get lots of questions about. But that's not going to be their main business, and that's why there's a good opportunity there. So when you go in um, and you help them out on their tent program, you tell them to schedule for Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Friday, you know, like spread those days apart, give them one day, see how they fill it. If they're really busy, give them two days and then spread those days apart. Those are the days that you book all your clients at and I will come in, I will do the jobs here, and I'll do the jobs there. And then if somebody's got a problem, shift them over to Monday or Friday, you know, one of those two days, and then, and then keep going back and forth on those days. So they're going to be happy because they're making extra money. You're going to be happy because you're making good money too. Um, but they're not going to be able to keep you busy six days out of the week. And that's a lot of times why some of these places can't keep tenors is because they can't afford to pay them a lot. Um, but they have a good amount of work still coming in. It's just not quite what a full tin shop would do. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. If you're looking into doing work for other companies, mobile work, whatnot, there's good opportunities out there. So thank you guys uh, for tuning in today. Uh, I got a split for a few days. I got a class to teach. We might do, um, 
might do a live stream somewhere in there for like an hour or two. I'm not sure yet. Kind of just depends on how crazy it is. Uh, but I got to do a class for the next three days, and then so I'll be back on Friday. I'll be back on Friday with a uh, with another one, I think. I think. Probably. Friday or Saturday. All righty, my dudes. Have a good one. How long was the shipping for your plotter? <laughs> FedEx screwed it up on the first one, so it took a month. Uh, the other one was like a week. Okay. Talk to, uh, if you're ordering it from Plotter Depot, just ask them and they'll give you a good estimate. It's heavy, so it can take a week. Could you give a pricing chart for the different tints, etc.? cetera? Uh, I don't have anything to post, but you've kind of heard some of the pricing. We can talk about it next time, I think. Have a good one. Bye.